Good evening, Central Indiana, and welcome to another edition of Sports Nuts. We have an outstanding guest in studio tonight, but first let me give my sponsors, American Basement Solutions, Wellspring, Reps Fitness, Bland and Boys Lawn Care, Just Winging It, and of course, Judge Williams, findhelp.org, get a hold of him, and then our savior back here, Stid's uh, Comfort Air System. They like today, I, I want to turn down about 40 and just lay in here all night, so... Great show tonight. I'm going to kick it over to the voice of Sports Nuts, Mr. Dean Sisson. How are you doing, Dean? Good. How are you? Um, I'm happy to be here. Yep. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We've had a good run of guests lately, but tonight we have hit a home run. We have IU legend Ted Kitchell in studio with us. You got short fences if you think you've hit, <laughs> hit, hit me as a home run. So <laughs> I really appreciate you coming down. How, how was traffic getting here? Uh, I'm pretty used to driving it, uh, you know, with obviously everything going on with 69. So it wasn't terrible. I mean, we, there was a se semi that was obviously bringing stuff to the job, the, site. The job site. And so uh, he, he was a little slow. But overall, it, it, it it's not that bad. Yeah, it's way better than I expected it to be. Yeah. I, I'll be glad when the part that wraps around Martinsville gets done because all the semis and dump trucks are coming right through town. And, you know, the, the one lane from here to Indy is not too bad, but the – funneling through there so i'll be glad when that gets done so. yeah it, it, it i'm sure it'll be very very nice i don't know how long it's going to take for it to get done but once it is done it'll be nice yeah they probably they said one construction year so they said they, they closed down 37 on january 2nd or 3rd of this year and they said one one year or so somewhere around christmas they so it'll probably be two years yeah so it'll probably be two years but but I also heard, too, that there's big bonuses if they finish it on time. So they were out there working the last two Sundays trying to get, get it done. So that would be nice if they can yep. get it done. So uh, how's the golf game? Uh, my golf game is a little uh, rusty right now. <laughs> um, I mean, at one, I, I used to be a pretty good player. I mean, in the, when I was, you know, in my 30s and 40s, uh, you know, I played in the state amateur three or four times and played in the state open and, I used to like the competition. I mean, I didn't get in those events thinking I was going to win them, sure. but, uh, you know, trying to make the cut and just, you know, competing. But, uh, boy, once I hit about 57, uh, you start losing distance. And, uh, and I mean, also I have Park Parkinson's, which uh, it doesn't affect my golf game a lot, but it uh, affects a little bit chipping. My my right hand gets to shaking a little bit, and uh, so chipping it affects it a little bit. So my score, some of my scoring shots aren't as good as they used to be, but I'm still uh, I'm still a four or five handicap, so it's not, it's not terrible. Still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you get diagnosed with Parkinson's? Um, gosh, it's been about six years ago. I uh, I ended up in the hospital because I I didn't have any energy and. You know, finally I went to the doctor. I thought I had mono, and uh, they said, "Hey, why don't you go have a chest X-ray?" I had a chest X-ray. The next thing they know, I had three or four blood clots in my lungs, and some blood nice. clots in my legs. And so they put me on medication. They put me on warfarin or, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, blood thinners. Yeah. And uh, I noticed that my right hand shook. And so for a year or so, the the doctor treated me for tremors. And I was in there about a year later, and I told him, I said, Doc, I don't think that that tremor medicine's doing any good. So anyway, my company at the time sent me out to see some specialists, and I sat with two neurosurgeons, and they sat with me for about 15 minutes, and they said, you know, you you've got, you got Parkinson's. And they acted like, you know, it kind of hit me. You know, I was out in Boston is where I went. I was there by myself. I didn't know my wife wasn't with me or anything, and... Uh, Kind of like, wow, punch right in the face. You, know, you right. got Parkinson's. And they said, hey, it's not, not a big deal, you know. Um, they said, you die with Parkinson's, not because of Parkinson's, you know. Okay. So, uh, and uh, Monday, I played in a big golf outing at Highland for ALS. So there's a huge difference, you know. I mean, I saw the people out there and talked to some of the people at ALS. And, I mean, now that is a... Uh, uh, I mean, you die because of ALS. And so uh, Parkinson's, I'm able, you know, there's a lot of different different speeds. Some people have a, a fast acting that reacts a lot more. Some people, uh, you know, mine's much slower. So uh, you wouldn't even know that I had it if, uh, if I probably didn't tell you. 
but I'm real involved in rock steady boxing. Uh, you know, part that's for Parkinson's. Uh, you go in and you you work out, you do do some boxing <clears throat> and uh, things like that. But uh, I would encourage anybody listening or anybody out there that has Parkinson's get involved and stay involved with with something. You know, working out. You know, because you know sitting at home and feeling sorry for yourself is not going to do you any good. It's so it's a muscle. It attacks your muscles. Yeah, it's uh, basically it's uh, it's your brain is not uh, creating enough dopa. Okay. Okay. And so, like I'm on medicines, a carbidopa, levodopa, to you know help help create more dopa. Um, I mean, I'm no doctor, so I can't give you much more than that. But uh, yeah, your brain is not not creating enough dopa, and so because of it, you have um, you know shaking. Uh, usually it attacks one side of your body or another, uh, mine, a little bit of the right side. And it affects my golf game only because sometimes I have to tell myself, <clears throat> you know, release that right hand, release it, you know, hit it, hit it hard with that right hand. So, uh, but uh, overall, uh, I just would say, you know, get involved because I've seen people that aren't doing much and they walk slower and they talk slower and I've got them involved where they're working out three or four days a week and all of a sudden they're walking faster, they're talking faster, they're more involved. So, uh, yeah, the rock steady boxing has been very, very good. Is it hereditary? They say it is, yeah. I really? think they say it is. Yeah. Um, different different, different things. Some, some people talk about well water. Uh, I see the things come across TV. If you've used any of these chemicals, you know, uh, soaps or shampoos. Yeah, or... I mean, and I grew up on a farm, so we used all the weed, you know, herbicides, and and we also uh, raised tomatoes, and you'd have to spray the tomatoes, keep the insects and everything off of them. So who knows um, how 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 I got it? But anyway, I got it. I deal with it, and uh, that's just the way it is. Tim Burnham says, not sure if Ted still plays in the league at Martinsville, but he can play and his boys are really good, great guys. Uh, we've got uh, Kenny's up in Kalamazoo, Michelle's in Iowa, um, and then Jeff says, is Ted sporting his national championship ring? So I don't, I don't wear my national championship ring. I've got some friends of mine that I play, <clears throat> that I play golf with that always want to see it, and it's just not... Just not me, you know, wearing that big, it's a big, nice, big ring. And uh, I just keep it in a jewelry box at home. Tucked so away. Keep it there with uh, three Big Ten championship rings. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. NIT championship ring. <laughs> NCAA championship ring and, and watch. So I was lucky enough to have played in an era when Indiana had a lot of great players <laughs> and uh, great Great, great coach, and uh, so we were very fortunate. That was a hell of an era, and including you, sir, as a great player. And the, the moments that you guys brought, not only just here, but Central Indiana across the country, you know, it's etched in our minds forever. And, and just appreciate you guys as, as players and as young men doing what you guys did. Yeah, I mean, you played uh, basketball the right way in our opinion, coach you know? built a great program, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> and that was. Um, you know, like you said, your mother passed uh, not too long ago, and she was, you said she's a huge IU fan. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you the number of people probably that were over 65 that used to stay at home uh, on Thursdays and Saturdays to watch Indiana basketball. It's a yeah. Bob Knight and Indiana basketball team. Appointment TV. Yeah. yeah. So, 10 till uh, 7, the popcorn was gone. You know, back then, if somebody was having a wedding, they'd say, yeah, we're having it on Saturday. Oh, well, you can't have it then because I, I used to play in Michigan Whoever, that day. Yeah. We, we can't come then. But, uh, yeah, Coach Knight did a great job. He always wanted to, uh, even now when you talk to him, I mean, he's fighting dementia and uh, things like that. He always talks about, you know, we did it the right way, you know. And so there were some people out there, not to mention, say, Kentucky, uh, that we felt like maybe didn't do it the right way. But uh, we, w we went to class, we graduated, we played basketball, and those were the two things that he basically promised when he uh, recruited me. He said, I'll make you the best player you can possibly be, and you'll, get an, uh, you'll, you'll graduate. He says, now, you might never be good enough to play as far as consistently. There might always be somebody better in front of you. 
but I'll make you the best you can possibly be. So, uh, yeah, everything turned out, turned out pretty good. We had a lot of great players. How does he go up to northern Indiana and still a so well, you're in Purdue's backyard pretty much, wasn't you? I was in Purdue's backyard <clears throat> and I was a farm kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, I grew up on the big John Deere tractors and farming and corn beans. We even raised sixty acres of tomatoes. Um, so uh yeah, he definitely came in. That was a time when he could probably go in about anywhere and get who he wanted. You know, seventy sixteen. I was gonna say, think about it. He graduated. You graduated high school in seventy eight, right? Yeah. So seventy five, they were pretty good. Yeah, they were bad. Seventy six, they were okay. You know what I mean? So the funny thing about that is the seventy five team was probably the best team coach ever had. He's always said that. Yeah, that he they, they no were. doubt, because not only would they tear you down defensively, but they'd score a hundred points on you. Yeah. When Will the seven, May broke his arm. Well, yeah, Scotty May yeah, broke Scottie, his arm and they yeah. got beat by Kentucky. Yeah. A team they had beat by twenty earlier in the earlier year. season. And uh the next year they still D you up, but they they couldn't score they didn't have you know, they didn't have Green and Laskowski coming off the bench and shooting and but, you know, to go along with that, the 80 team that I played on was the best team I ever played on. You know, we won the national championship in 81, but in 80, you got Isaiah Thomas and Randy Whitman starting at guards. Woody. Butch Carter coming off the bench. Mike Woodson, who was the best player in the country at the time. He'd just come off the Pan Am victory. Yep. He was the best player in the country. Yeah, Brown uh, and Jim Thomas. James Thomas. Oh, yeah. You had... Uh, Tony, you know, Tony Brown. I mean, yeah, I mean, we were... If you remember the uh, the Olympic Games that year, Carter boycotted, Jimmy Carter yep. boycotted the Olympics. The Russians won the gold in basketball. They came over here that that fall and they played us and we beat them by 20. And I remember they put uh, Isaiah's jersey on the Sports Illustrated cover right. and put greatest team in the world, you know. Um, they had, did they have Sabonis still at that point? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a monster. Yeah. Seven, I played two. against him in, even in eight, uh, the 82 World Games. We played, uh, I played with Doc Rivers, and I was on that 82 World team. I probably shouldn't have been, but I was. Um, and we got beat 93-92, but Sabonis was on that team, and he yeah. was the best player in the world. Oh, I mean, he was, yeah. he was 6'10", 6'11", 7 foot. Yeah. And he could, he was dribbling between his legs. You know, a lot of people only remember him when he played at Portland, where he was bad, old. Bad yeah, he was feet, older, but knees, he could still right. really pass. Right. You know, well, when he was 17, he was between the legs and shooting 25 foot jumpers, and he could, he was really good. Amazing. You want to catch up? Jeff said he enjoyed watching how you practice at different high school gyms in the late 70s and 80s. Support my Hoosiers out in Iowa. Colin Charles, this is epic. Well done. So, before we get too far ahead, I've got a lot of that down. I want to get back to it, but I want you to talk about your golf outing for that benefits yeah. Parkinson's. So give us. The yeah, info. we started a golf out, outing to benefit Parkinson's. My kids are the ones that wanted to do it. And uh, so uh, we did it two years ago. Last year, we didn't do it because of the pandemic. Uh, we had a great response. I think we had 38 teams of foursomes. Um, and uh it was a terrible day i mean it rained all day of course it was unbelievable i mean i prayed and everything about it, it just <laughs> rained and rained but you know what everybody stayed and we had a great time we had a lot of silent auction items and uh we raised about forty five thousand dollars that day wow <clears throat> and so mon a week from monday the 23rd of august will be the second annual uh it'll be at Valla vista once again and uh, we've uh, we've got pretty much a full field. Uh, I've got some great uh, silent auction items. Uh, French Lick uh, gave me uh, a great, you know, people haven't been down to French Lick to enjoy the, whether it be the casino, the hotels, the golf, whatever it might be. It's a it's a great great place, and they've been kind enough to give me a, a three day two two night stay. Good deal. Also, I'm um, good friends with some people at Pinehurst in Pinehurst, North Carolina, oh, wow. and they gave me a three day, two de two days, two night stay, play uh, three rounds of golf wow. at Pinehurst. And I mean, obviously, we're talking there about, uh, you know, the second or the number two course is where they hold the U.S. Open. Right. So fabulous golf course there, and then. Uh, <laughs> 
Last year, uh, we had, uh, I think we're going to have again, John Mellencamp signed uh, electric guitar. Uh, last year, we had two people fighting over that. And so <laughs> Joe, uh, John's stepbrother, says, how about I get one, another one and you pay 5000 and you pay 5000 So it was, That's a uh, good deal there. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. But anyway, we got a lot of, a lot of the local courses, Indy Country Club, Highland, <clears throat> Bridgewater, uh, a lot of courses in Indy that are private that people couldn't play. You know, they can they can you know buy one of those silent auction items and play. So it's been a good deal, and uh, we look hope, hopefully we'll raise uh, some more money for Parkinson's research. Do you still have spots open? We do not. Okay. What about sponsors? Yeah, we have sponsors, or you can just donate. Um, yeah. I can send you guys the link. Yeah, uh, my, I think we'll I'll my, gladly do that. Yeah, my yeah. daughter kind of handles it all. I'm, you know, being 60, I didn't grow up on the computer. Sure. So <laughs> all the kids, you know, they get everything's on the computer yeah. or their phone. But uh, my daughter's got the link and you can, uh, uh, we have whole sponsors of like $300. And then there's a lot of people that just send in direct donations on, on the link. Sure. So. so. We've got on our porch time page. We have about ten thousand followers on this on this site. So uh, we'll get the info from you after the show, and sure. we'll, we'll post, post a flyer and all yeah. that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's great. Get some yeah. information out. And then, yeah, it's it's been really good. I mean, you. I mean, I have a lot of great friends. Uh, there, there's a lot of IU guys there. I mean, sure. Les Kowski will be there. Whitman flies in for it. Last year, Jerry Cece, not an IU guy, but a, a great guy was uh he was there and played in it he and his wife uh i think hillman's going to be there eisenberger's going to be there oh, wow. there's a lot of iu uh, connections and and woody would be there but he's got a previous engagement so he is a sponsor of a whole and then he also pays for a team and he sends four guys into play so uh uh, yeah, good deal. Jerry's the only Purdue guy that we cut slack to around here. So <laughs> no. he, he's yeah. kind of got an ace you up his sleeve. We, uh, Coach and I definitely missed on that one right yeah. there because he he, he should I mean, he lived in the outskirts <laughs> of Bloomington, and I mean he should have been an IU guy, but uh, he played like an IU guy. He was gritty, and uh, he was a great great opponent to play against. You know, he told us a story when he was in here, which I thought was was pretty yeah. interesting. Chushevsky was a grad assistant when Jerry was in high school, and they always used to fight over who was going to recruit Jerry because he was 20 minutes up the road. Everybody else had to go yeah. to wherever, you yeah. know, in Illinois or Ohio or whatever. And so they all kept telling Coach, do you need to get him? And Jerry said, I guess I played bad the night that he came and watched me or whatever. Yeah. But he said all these – he said he, they were at yeah, a Yeah, he, he lit it up every night when they were there. But when Coach came, it was just one of the nights. There it, were two guys that I remember Coach saying that he missed on. Because I think they, they recruited Scheidler was the kid, the blonde – kind Jay, of the blonde bomber. Yeah. yeah. Jay, Jay Scheidler. Yeah. And, and, and rather than Jerry, you know. And and he ended up uh, playing at I, and then he went to Duke, I think, or someplace. But anyway, there were two guys that Coach, I remember saying he missed on, it, and it was Jerry Seasteen and Kyle Macy. Those were the two guys that he said that he definitely missed on. And yeah. he, those are two pretty, two pretty good ones. <laughs> two pretty good players. He didn't miss on many, though. No. <laughs> He did yeah. miss on many. I know we talked about it off air, but you have to get the the scoop from Jerry about how he got to the NBA. I told you briefly, but I cut a lot of it out. But it's it's a fascinating story about how Jerry made it to the NBA because he got drafted, but he didn't make the Warriors. And then he was basically out of basketball, and the Pacers had a tryout. And he went, and he said he was out of shape, and he was just trying to do his best to, like, get through it. And he must he played well enough to, to get a spot. But it's it's a really – interesting story but he took advantage you know because i mean just because you made the team and you're a 12th guy you're not getting any playing time so he's obviously busting his ass and yeah in, in practice and doing all the things because i mean he was a key guy to boston you know when they ended up winning the championship and things like that i mean he uh he was a great great player and just a great determination to persevere through all the struggles you know size wise and things like that and uh just Good player and a great guy. Yeah, he's a good, he's very good yes. dude. Yeah. And we talked about briefly with him that night. It was like, oh, so it wasn't easy. Like, you didn't just get off the bus and go show up <laughs> and make baskets. And he said, no, you know, and he yeah. kind of told us. And it's, it's a good story, you know, about hard work yeah, and perseverance, sure. like you said, hard work and perseverance. 
Um, so, uh, let's see what it says here. I remember watching um, Dad and Randy when I was a little girl. Dad, great man. She must have caught something on her to talk. She's going to pick it up too soon. <laughs> it's all right, Camille. Yeah, the, the memories of IU basketball during that 80s stretch was just phenomenal. So you, you grew up just outside of Kokomo, right? You said in a little small farming community. Yeah, a little town called, uh, called Galveston, just north of uh, Kokomo. So uh, we were, you know, a 2A type school. Back then it didn't matter yeah, because was everybody played. Uh, thank God yeah. everybody played the same. We didn't have to do that 1A, 2A, 3A bull. Yeah. <laughs> I get it in so, football. In football, I think, yeah. should, but in basketball, just, let's lace them up and go play. Let them play. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I hate somebody telling me that you aren't good enough to play. So, we're, we're sorry, but you're not good enough to play with the big boys. Yeah. You know, you, you know, because I played on a team <clears throat> at Lewis Cass. When I was a freshman, I didn't get to play much. Uh, I played between varsity and JV, and they didn't play me a lot. But we were 5 and 16. As a sophomore, we were 16 and five. As a junior, we were 18 and, I think we were 18 and two, uh, or 18 and three. And two of those losses came to Peru. Uh, Bob Macy, coach, Kyle's dad was the coach. And uh, yeah, we were 18 and three as a sophomore, or as a junior, and the coach got fired <laughs> when we were 18 <laughs> and three. But wow. as a senior, we were 23 and 0. And the close through the sectional, the closest anybody had come to us was 13, I think. And uh, I mean, I obviously went to IU. My cousin John was a great player who ended up going to Purdue. And we had a sophomore on the team that was uh, about six, 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 seven at the time, and he went to Indiana State. So to have three guys at a two A school, there IU, Purdue, and D1, Indiana yeah, State. D1, uh, yeah. We were pretty good, and uh, I mean, we got beat in the regional at Marion by Marion in double overtime. Uh, so you can imagine what kind of whistle you got in that game. Sure. So, but Marion but, was in a pretty good run of championships. I believe. Yeah, yeah they were. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not complaining. Yeah. I mean, at least I had a chance to play. Yeah. And to play with the big boys, and uh, yeah, I think it's sad because I thought grow, growing up, everybody wanted their you know, their states to be like Indiana, Yeah. you know, instead we turn around and we end up being like everybody else. We go back. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's too they, bad. They they don't make movies about the 1A school winning the championship by beating other 1A schools, no. you know, I mean, they're, <laughs> it's a good point there. <laughs> so here's, here's what I always find interesting. I, I like that. When did you realize, hey, I'm pretty good. Like when, when did you realize like, Big time D1 is an option. Like, you know, I never, <clears throat> I never thought about myself as a, you know, a great player or thought of myself as like, oh, I'm going to go to IU or I'm going to go to Notre Dame or UCLA. I, I, I mean, my, my high school, Lewis Cass, had never won a sectional. The most important thing in my life was to win a sectional. You know? Yes. People, People say, oh, you know, how, how important was winning the national championship? And I said, well, it was very important. I said, it ranked second. This is the biggest win in my life because winning the sectional, um, you know, when I was a senior was the most important win of my life. It was for the entire community. Um, you know, everybody was involved. It was, it was a great, great, great deal. Um, so, but I guess I would, I would say I knew I had a chance is, you know, my sophomore year, I think I started getting letters. You know, I think William and Mary was the first letter I got. And, you know, my mom and I would sit down and we'd fill out these damn things, you know. <laughs> and so you'd get two or three letters a day and you'd fill them out. Mom kept them in a shoebox. Finally, one of the coaches kind of looked at us and said, don't fill those out. They said, he's good enough. that They'll find him. Don't worry about it, you know. But uh, I guess when I started getting a lot of letters and uh, – you know, some coaches showing some interest. Uh, you know, I actually went to Purdue, Purdue's basketball camp I, between my junior and senior year. And uh, so I would practice all day or go to camp all day. And then at night, 
they'd let me go over to Mackey Arena and I'd get to play with the team. Now, I'm sure that wasn't a recruiting yeah, violation, was it? Yeah, that's probably against the rules at all. <laughs> but that was probably the worst that's decision. That's good stuff, though. That's probably the worst decision they ever made because I didn't really know who was in control of that situation. If Fred Schaus was or if Walter Jordan or Wayne Walls or Eugene. I mean, they were really good back then. So, And I didn't, but... Uh, I don't know. You know, when Coach Knight started recruiting me, I definitely knew who was in charge of that situation down in Bloomington. So, so that's that's one of the things I've written down. Do you remember the first time you met him? Coach Knight? Yeah. Uh, yeah, when he came to our, our house. He, he had come the second um, – I mean, when I was a senior in high school, I played football, basketball, baseball. Okay. And so in the football, we were 4-1 and one. And that week in practice, when we were four and one, I got my right wrist caught up under somebody and they landed on and broke my right wrist. Okay. So I had to drive myself home and then my mom took me to the hospital, you know, and it was my shooting wrist and everybody and the whole community's like, oh, you know, what, it, it would, yeah. It would say, what the hell is he doing playing football? All right. But I love my, I love playing with my, you know, when you're at a school that size, I, everybody knows everybody. Playing if you're one fellas, of the better yeah. athletes in the in the in the deal, you need to play. And right. so, I mean, in football, I played de- defensive tackle, offensive tight end. I punted, and I snapped extra points, <laughs> and probably blocked extra <laughs> points. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I, was, I never left the field, and so <laughs> anyway, I got the cast off two weeks before the first basketball game, and I worked really hard. You know, getting it. I think the first game we played Winnemac, I think I scored maybe 25. Second game of the year, we played Peru. And like I said, they had beaten us. They were two of the three losses we had had as a before. junior. Uh, they had beaten us. And for some reason, Coach Knight came to that game. He didn't tell anybody he was coming, but he, he came and he stood way up in the corner. He just kind of stood over in the corner. He didn't, didn't ask for tickets or nothing. He didn't let anybody know. And I scored like 41 or 42 that night against Peru. We won pretty easily, like by, one by 20. And a couple weeks later, <clears throat> we had some some friends that had grown up in Galveston who lived in Bloomington, and somehow they got in contact, coach got in contact with them and says, you know, would he be interested? And, you know, the guy's like, well, sure, I'm sure he'd be very interested. So I remember I was in algebra class, and I remember the basketball coach, you know, came and knocked, knocking on the door and he says, come here. And so I go over there and he says, hey, Coach Knight's on the phone and he wants to know if it would be okay if he came to your house tonight. You know, well, this is the time, like you said, 75, 70, yeah. I mean. And how old are you? You're 17? I'm 16. 17 years yeah. old, you yeah. know, and I look at him like, what the hell do you think? Of yeah. course it'll be okay. Of course okay, you, you know? Right. So, you know, everybody, you know, I had coaches coming. You know, Seastine would probably tell you the same thing. You know, they would they would come. You know, Cincinnati coach and the Purdue coach and Butler coach, and you know, you got somebody there all the time. It was different when night came. You know, usually my high school coach would ask questions, and my mom and dad asked questions. Night comes, sits on the couch, gets there about eight o'clock at, at night after they had practiced and everything. My dad almost shaved off his mustache. My dad's six foot four powerful guy i mean he was a big farmer you know farm for his whole life 65 years you know he almost shaved off his mustache because he knew coach knight didn't like facial hair (laughs) you know he didn't but he almost did and everybody just sat there they nobody had asked any questions there just but that was the first time i met him and he sat there and we had a great night uh he told stories you know he's a great storyteller and he sat there until almost midnight and he had a two and a half hour drive to back, hour, easy, drive yeah. back to Bloomington. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the real thing when he was, it, it, you know, that when he was recruiting you is how, how important is playing at IU? Because he wanted it to be the number one thing in your life was playing for IU because he knew if he got guys like that, they'd fight, you know, and fight and fight. And, uh, so, I mean, the only schools I were really looking at was uh, Purdue, IU, and Arkansas. <clears throat> if I hadn't went to IU, I'd have probably went to Arkansas. I loved Eddie Sutton. He was one of the 
greatest guys I've ever, ever known as far as a coach. He was a great coach, but he was a better person. I mean, I know he got a lot of bad publicity when he was at Kentucky. Sure. He had some, he had some problems. I know that, but you know, I went to the only place I ever visited was Arkansas. They flew me down there and I spent the weekend. I watched, uh, Arkansas. I think they were coached by Lou Holtz at the time. They played Texas and Earl Campbell was a senior and uh, Texas beat Arkansas 13 to nine and Arkansas kicked a 67 yard field goal that day. Holy it crap. might still be, I might, might still be a record. I don't know. But anyway, the next day basketball practice started. And if you'll remember who was on the Arkansas, it was Moncrief, Delph and Brewer, the triplets. Oh yeah. I think they went to the final eight that year before bird maybe put them out. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so I sat and watched them and had a great time. And uh, anyway, that if I had no one die, you, I'd have probably went to Arkansas. And Whitman, I know, was the same way because he he loved Eddie Eddie Sutton also. So he almost got both. <laughs> yeah, he almost had got the two of us because we both liked Eddie Sutton. And you know, when I finally called Coach Knight, I think it was during the blizzard because they were stuck in Michigan. I think IU was stuck in Michigan, and he says, uh, "I told him I wanted to come to IU." He says, we'll call the, your other top two choices and let them know just so, so they know. So I called Eddie Sutton, you know, it's a call you don't want to make, sure. you know, and he was so just nice, so professional. He says, I knew when coach Knight started recruiting, you know, he said, that's probably where you'd end up. He says, you, you're a great player for his program and doing what the thing, he says, if you ever have a problem or need something, he said, there's always a scholarship here at Arkansas for you. Wow. So then I called Fred Schaus at Purdue and uh, he's just talking and going back and forth. And I said, yeah, coach, I've decided I'm going to go to IU. Er, <laughs> hung up the phone. <laughs> pretty much hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have much more good to say. So, uh, but uh, I kind of, you know, the other funny thing about that is, is Eddie Sutton was the head coach. You knew his number one assistant was Gene Cady. At oh, Arkansas, wow. what a connection! I did not know that he was what number one assistant was Gene Cady, and like a year later, he took the Western Kentucky job. My high school coach went down and was a an assistant coach for him for a couple years, and then all of a sudden he shows up at Purdue. My last two years, because I had redshirted one year, he shows up at Purdue, and the last two years I played uh, Purdue and Gene Cady's teams. That it's inter it's fascinating how. You know, Earl Campbell before he was Earl Campbell, Lou yeah. Holtz before he was Lou Holtz, Gene Cady before he yeah. was Gene Cady. I mean, it's it's fascinating how it all ties together and yeah. come, comes and back. That, that, and that was just one visit, you know, <clears throat> and I was supposed to take a visit to Wake Forest. And it was all set up for me to go. <clears throat> Wake Forest had been in to watch me play before I got my cast off. And... uh so they were real interested in me and the one assistant coach i remember said uh you know something about you know your shooting and stuff like that i, I said well you do know that i'm right-handed right and he goes oh no he says i thought you were left-handed because i got to where i was really efficient left-handed yeah. you know what i had the, my cast wrapped up so i wouldn't kill anybody in practice but i got very efficient with my left hand but uh I ended up calling Wake Forest and I said, you know what? I don't want to waste your money and waste your time because I know I'm going to IU and uh, I appreciate everything you've done. And they were very, very nice about it. So did you officially have a visit to IU or was, well, um, you know, did I officially, I, I didn't come down to IU and spend two or three days, sure. you know, um, you know, I came down to a couple games. I remember I watched them play Wisconsin when they Wisconsin had uh, those twins way, way back. I, mean, I, I came to a couple games, but uh, I, I don't know if you would say I took a really an official visit. Sure. You know, I uh, coach in the front room pretty much sold it at that point. He pretty much sold sold the deal. Yeah. Um, and. You know, he was always, uh, you know, he after the game or if I was at a game, you know, you'd go up to his office and he'd sit and talk to you and everything. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, you had no idea what you were getting into. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just just truthfully, you, sure. you, everybody says, oh, you know, I had a tough coach in high school and 
I, I I said, you have no idea <laughs> what the hell you're getting into when you went to play for that man because he was working on you mentally and physically all the time. See, that that's what I've always – I mean, I, I didn't even make the high school team because I wasn't any good, but I always said I felt like I could play for him physically. I could do – but the mental stuff, he would have he would have worked yeah, me he, over like that. He'll wear he'll wear you out. Yeah. I mean, and he's you know, people seem you know, I always told him, I said, you know, with Katie, you know, he looked like that bulldog on the sidelines. I said, He's nothing like that. He's the nicest guy and just good you know, I said, with night, what you see is what you get. There's and no. and if you think he's bad at, at games it's he's like that every day in practice. I mean, he is he's got that fist on you and he is pushing and he is shoving and he is trying to make you better all the time mentally, physically. Uh did did he ever just like throw a boat like just ride you for a week and then at the end of the week say, "Hey, good job." And to let you know that like never I see what he say, "Good job." Never. I mean, I I shouldn't say never, you know, he'd give you that hard smack on the back that, of the head. Yeah. You know, hard slap on the back of the head with that seventy six ring yeah. popping you. You know. And that's and how that, you that do. was supposed to be a positive, I guess. <laughs> but but hey, he, he uh <laughs> he very seldom he I think he felt like there were enough people around campus patting you on the ass and telling you how All good right. you were. That's a good point. Yeah, that uh, he didn't feel like he needed to. He, he needed, needed to, to take. The, he, needed he needed to balance that. Probably out. Probably just hearing your name in the starting lineup. And the next especially game. if you were one of the leaders or the captain. Yeah, you know he's going to push you harder yeah. and expect more, more out of you. And he told me that after uh, I had uh, blown out my disc and I was done as a fifth year senior. I mean, he 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 came into the room and he told me he says, you know, I always appreciated your effort. And I just wanted everybody else to play as hard as you did, cool. you know. So, uh, you know, he. But on a regular basis, no. no. I mean, he was he was trying to make you better and pushing and. Yeah, not even at the end of the season after after you beat North Carolina for the third time, I believe it was, if my memory is correct. Championship year was there a time where he got you in the locker room and said, "Add a kid," or "Add a as a team," or. Compassion at all. I remember we won the national championship. Practice the next day. Um, Let's go. You know, I mean, as far as leading into that, you know, Landon obviously was the, sure. was the reason we became went from a good team to a great team. Yeah. We won our last, uh, I think, six games in the Big Ten. We won the Big Ten championship outright. That's another thing. You know, my three Big Ten championships are outright. We didn't tie it with anybody. Those don't count. Yeah. But um, – didn't we, you know, we played Maryland. I want to ask that game because the story goes they were, they were lippy. And like at one point in time, he well, turned over you know, we, we were at, we were under, we were in Dayton yeah. and we were down under getting taped and, you know, in the locker room and St. Joe was playing DePaul on the floor. DePaul was the number one seed in the country. Sure. Mark Aguirre, the whole deal. Right. St. Joe beats them like 43, 42, you know, and they're gone. Right. They're out. Yeah. So we walk on the floor and we're playing... Maryland, they've got Buck Williams, yeah. Albert King, yeah. Ernest Graham, three All Americans, yeah. three great, great players. And we look up and we're down eight to nothing. And Knight didn't even call timeout. But at the end of the game, when you looked up the scoreboard, it was 99 to 64. And yeah. we had won by 35. And we had just ha hammered them. I mean, we were running. Isaiah was. Dishing the ball, Ray was dunking, yes. Landon was dunking. It was, uh, it was one of the greatest games we'd ever played. You know, yes. I, uh, Whitman hit shots, I hit shots, and you know we went back, came back to Bloomington where the regional was, and the regional was supposed to have Kentucky, Wake Forest, DePaul, and Indiana, and instead it was Boston College, St. Joe. UAB and in Indiana. We played UAB the first game. <clears throat> Before we played UAB, we came to practice. We'd practice for 45 minutes and he'd throw us out of practice. You know, you know, and what we you were playing okay. You yeah. know, you feel like yeah, we're playing okay and he and he's nothing's happy. I mean basically 
he knows that we're thinking we're playing UAB. Who the hell's UAB? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so two two of the days we get thrown out of practice. And you kind of walk away shaking your head, you know, but it was mentally getting your getting yourself ready. Keeping that edge. So we beat I think we beat UAB by eighteen. Then we played St. Joe and uh we knew they would stall if they got ahead. And I remember our, I took the first shot of the game, made it. We were up 2-0, and we ended up beating them by 32, I think. Yeah, you didn't really have a close close game except yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, and then we you know, went and played LSU. LSU was great. And uh, that morning, I think Knight had stuffed one of them in a garbage pan or something. It was one of their fans. The fans, yeah. 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 So that was a fan. Yeah. <laughs> but we beat them by 19, I think, and then we played North Carolina in the finals, and uh, we beat them by 13. So. Yeah. so think think about this run. So first round, Maryland's ranked 18th in the country, beat them by 35. Yeah. Okay. Maryland had just beaten <clears throat> Virginia to get in that, to get in to, the tournament. for the ACC crown. I think they played Virginia in the ACC tournament. Yep. They beat Virginia by like 20, I think. Yeah. Samson and those guys. Yeah. So that, they were on a high. They were yeah. rolling. Yeah. We, and you guys ran them out of the gym. I ran mean, them out of the gym. Yeah. So then you play UAB, which is, I find interesting because you get beat by UAB the next year. and it's They like, were up and coming. Yeah. Are, are they a basketball school all of a sudden? Or what? I was, and, I was and surprised. if you go look, that next year they beat us and they should have beat Virginia the next the next game. game and I think they ended up getting beat by Virginia and going down, but they were up on them and should have won that game. So then you beat St. Joe's by 32 and then LSU's ranked fourth in the, and that's a final four game. They're fourth in the nation. You beat them by 18 yeah. and then you play North Carolina, which is sixth in the nation and you beat them by 13. So total winning margin of 113 points in the yeah. six games. And, an average of twenty two and a half points per game that that you won in the tournament. Run. Yeah, yeah, we I mean, were we we were on a roll and uh, we were pl- really playing good. Landon was playing great. Isaiah was just. I mean, no, a lot of people, you know, when he went pro, they're like, oh, you know, he's not that good. But if you played with him every day in practice, you knew how good he was. Yeah. <laughs> he's the best player that I ever played with. Uh, you know, Mike Woodson was probably the best player at IU but to see what Isaiah did and to see what a great leader he was. I mean, you know, he won a national championship. He took a average Detroit team and he built them into a contender. Whether you liked him or Bad didn't voice, like him, yeah. if, like him or don't like him, they won two championships in the middle of a run when nobody, yeah. you know, was winning other than the big boys and uh and isaiah basically did that on his own so uh and, he was a fabulous player and the thing i think people miss on on um isaiah he's soft-spoken and quiet and everything but he's tough it, i mean don't you agree with that real tough yeah, yeah. i mean i i, I think people, chicago in that in that yeah. one school so yeah um well south side of chicago he was, yeah. he was illinois but yeah. yeah south side of chicago but really tough like None of us could have would have any idea that where he grew up and what he grew up in. I mean, between his brothers being either alcoholics or drug addicts, um, the gangs trying to recruit Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, there was a toughness to him that he, he wouldn't back down from any anything or anybody, and that's what he made the Detroit team into. To yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, he didn't have to do that, but I, I saw him a couple times in games. I mean, he wouldn't, he wouldldn't, wouldn't take it from people. Well, I mean, there's stuff. There's the legendary game where he has basically, essentially, a broken ankle, and he finishes the game against and LA. against LA. Yeah, he scores like forty five. Yeah, he scored, cool. he scored like I think in the third quarter with the with the uh, sprained ankle. I mean, looking like a balloon, yeah. you know. He scores like thirty-one or yeah. something in, in one quarter. quarter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, LA had a pretty good team that year too. <clears throat> they had a couple guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, what what's what's the biggest jump from high school to college? I know we keep going back and forth, but like, how what's the biggest difference? Is it just the speed of the game, the yeah. size of just the speed of the game? Um, I mean, obviously the fans and stuff like that, but I, I never. I enjoyed playing in front of the fans, but I was always focused on what I was doing. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed 
Uh, it would never, you know, like some of these athletes today that, uh, you know, the tennis player, and then obviously we just got done with the Olympics with the Biles girl, and them saying, you know, the pressure. And, I mean, why do you play sports? Yeah. That's, that's the reason you play. Yep. Is to see if I'm better than you are, if I can get better. You know, I never saw Tiger Woods back down nope. from anybody. Yeah. You know, he wanted to compete. He yeah. wanted to love being in the arena, you know. And, uh, you know, that's the one saying, that, you know, it's not so much of winning, but being in the arena, being there. And, uh, but the quickness of the game, I can remember in high school, it was a matter of how many am I going to score tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I remember playing in the hyper when, we, when I first went to IU. We you know, all we go down the hyper and play. Yeah. I mean, they don't have to play in the hyper anymore yeah. now that they got the Bill Cook, the Cook Center pavilion yeah. and everything else. But we had to play in the hyper. <laughs> but I remember playing in the hyper, playing against these guys, and some of them were no names, you know, like you know Scotty Eels and people. I mean, that's not to put Scotty down, but I mean, he didn't play much, you know. And I never, hell, I couldn't score against them. Yeah. I said in high school, it was a matter of how many I was going to score. In college, when I first got there, it was a matter of would you score Score. at all? So it was just, they were bigger, they were faster, they were stronger. And, uh, you know, you have to get used to the pace of the game. And by the time I was a sophomore and starting and junior, you get used to the pace of the game. You see guys, they come in off the bench and they're running up and down, you know, and two minutes they've been in there. (laughs) They're just absolutely dead because they just mentally and physically just worn themselves out, you know, where the other, the veterans kind of, and to take it, take their time and get into it. And, uh, but yeah, it's just the speed of the game and, and the, the athletes. Yeah. You know, and then the scout, there's probably not much scouting in high school. I mean, but in, in college, you get like scouting reports on each individual player, right? <laughs> when you, when you went to IU, the first thing you got at the basket, when you came to a basketball meeting, the first thing you got was a notebook. And if coach Knight is up talking, better have that notebook open and you better be writing <laughs> what he's talking about. Uh, and then when we got into games, there would be a poster <clears throat> and it would have each individual um, and what they did. I mean, their, their tendencies. He likes to go left two dribbles and come back right. He's a post player and he likes to catch and turn to his right shoulder. Um, I, I knew everything about everybody. I knew about out of bounds plays. I knew every out of bounds play they had. Um, you know, these two guys are going to screen, screen, cross screen, cross screen. So we would pre switch. So that way, the guy I'm used to guarding, he's going to come right to me. You don't we'll have to switch. chase him. Yeah. yeah, I don't have to chase him. Try to chase him through a screen or anything yeah. like that. Just pre switch it. Comes comes right to me. You know, we, so, I mean, little things like that, you know, you know, Coach Knight's deal was always just trying to take something, take a few things away from them that they like to do. I mean, if you watch Bill Belichick's teams play, he doesn't always have the greatest players, but, uh, you know, if Reggie Wayne is used to catching six or seven passes a game, he's going to double team him and he's not going to let him catch any passes. He's going to make somebody catch passes that aren't, is not used to catching seven or eight balls a game see he makes them uncomfortable i i always remember growing up that it seemed like every time iu played there's some guy on the other team that has a career night and it used to frustrate me because it's like god this like fourth best player on the team scored his career high tonight well, that's why, because he's the fourth best player. Yeah. And they've taken away the, and it took me. And to usually three, that, yeah. usually that fourth best player, he's not used to scoring twenty points. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's and, used to scoring four. Yeah, and all of a sudden he's he's got eight in the first half. He's thinking, oh, he and he gets a little uncomfortable. Yeah. you know. But the uh, the other guy, you know, he's he's used to scoring twenty two a game, and now he's frustrated because he's not scoring, so he's taking bad shots. shots. He's forcing. But yeah, it. So, I mean that's that's all defense really is is trying. You know, this team likes to go point A to point B to point C. So if we take point A and B away from them and make them to go to C, it's almost like they look around like, what do I do now? You know, uh, you know, I don't I don't know what to do because I'm so used to being able to do what I want to do. So his thing was, uh, you know, try to take certain things away from people. And, you know, that's why I enjoy watching Belichick's teams play. I mean, it's not always that they're the most talented, but they they just, 
They're just going to hang in games and make you do things that you don't like to do. And sometimes I think people make it too difficult. Like, don't let the other team's best player beat you. Force the fourth best player to to hit a shot with five seconds left. He doesn't want that shot. He doesn't want the ball in that situation. Make him do that. And I think people some sometimes overthink it and try to be too no cute. Doubt. And I mean, too, too you're exactly right. I mean... You can't let Kevin Durant catch the ball in a late situation or Steph Curry or, or Steph, you know, yeah. I mean, those guys, they, they get it done. Yeah. They can get it done. I mean, Michael Jordan, you think Michael Jordan could tell you how many shots he missed that where they didn't win games, but he, he's remembered for the ones he did make. Yeah. And yeah. he wanted, he didn't care if he was going to miss it. You know, uh, he wanted the ball late in the game and, uh, bird was like that. I mean, all the great players are. You you know Larry at all? Not really. Yeah. He, when Jerry was in here, he we were talking about, and he said that Larry's just like he is. What you see, he's just like down to earth, laid yeah. back, just likes to fish, hang out on his boat. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's it's interesting to see that that really is Larry. You know what I mean? It's it's he is what he is. You know. So, um, go back to the eighty one season. So you guys were twenty six and nine, which I think is that the most losses by a national championship team winner. It was then. It is um, <clears throat> North Carolina State yeah. was close. Yeah. That's right. When yeah. Balvano, yeah, he took them. I think they Whitenberg might have been low and all of them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was a it was a painful year. Yeah. So you go to Hawaii. So lose to Kentucky, lose to Notre Dame, lose to North Carolina. No big deal. I mean, they lose to Clemson. And then you know where I'm going next. Pan Am, lose, Pan America. To, lose to Texas Pan America. And like we're really ne- down nine at half, get beat by six. Like really never. It was just, yeah. it was disastrous. I mean, can you imagine that team with yeah. Tolbert and Turner and you guys? It was disastrous. Kentucky, losing yeah. to a team. I mean, we got beat by Kentucky, and that's a game we should have won. Yeah. I mean, Ray misses a dunk, a lob dunk. Isaiah throws it perfect. Ray bangs it off the rim. Ray thought he made it. Got beat by Notre Dame. That wasn't a terrible loss. I mean, that's when they had Trapuca and uh, they were ranked I Jackson think. Yeah. and Orlando. And yeah. They they were they were good. Uh, but then we we go to North Carolina and we play Carolina, and we're ahead of them by like ten at the old Carmichael Arena. Funny thing about that game, <laughs> we end up getting beat, and so whenever you got beat, I mean, it was a shower. Get your stuff on and get the hell out of the locker room. Right. Get on the bus and get it. Get, let's get and hide. Let's get out of here. You know, because it was not going to be good, especially if you had a, it was a plane ride home. And so I remember, you know, I had started. That was about the time I had started starting. And uh, I remember I made a comment. You know what they were asking. You know what happened. The paper people. What happened? Blah, blah, blah. I said, you know what, we just didn't make the big plays down the stretch. Simple enough. I thought that was pretty simple. Get on the bus. Long plane ride home. Yeah, from Hawaii. Because that game, yeah. that game was in Honolulu, right? Well, no, no. Carolina was Carolina. that. Oh, it was, Carolina. It, it was game. at Carolina. Yeah. And so the next day we have film, and so he he walks in. And there'd be a, a a manager would stand over by the lights, saying around the corner. So when the projector went on, lights went off. When the projector stopped, lights went on. So he finally gets there 15, 20 minutes late, which is always the key. Walks in, projector goes on, jump ball, lights go off. They get the tip. Projector goes off. Lights come on. Kitchell, was that a big play? All they got, all they got was the tip. So now for the next right. next thirty minutes, every missed screen, every missed block out, <sighs> lights off, lights on, projector stuff. Was that a big play? I want to know. Do you think that was a big play? I, I noticed in the paper you said that we didn't make the big plays down the end. What, 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 I, can you point out which plays were big? Wh- which were the important plays in that game? 
I mean, you know, what, what do you do? Yeah. You sit there and say, yes, sir, yes, no, sir. sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yeah. it shall be. It was, a, it was a long film session, I can tell you that. <laughs> and you're just trying to pacify the reporter to shut I'm up. I'm just trying to get her out of my face yeah. and get on the bus. Right. That's all I'm trying to do. And now you got to pay for it the next day. Uh, but we ended up beating Kansas State, who was good. They had Rolando Blackman, and they were good. We beat them, kind of gave us a little uptick. Then we go to uh, Hawaii. And we win the first game. I think we beat Rutgers like 55 50 or something like that. But then we got beat by Clemson and we got beat by Texas Pan American. And this one guy on Texas Pan American was just killing us. He was like a six, seven, six, eight guy and he was on a roll that night. I mean, we, we, we go back to the hotel, which was an hour away. We stayed all the way across the island. Mm-hmm. Pack our stuff. We get on a plane at two in the morning to fly home. We come home and we've got about four days of practice, and it was absolutely brutal. I mean, it was, he just felt like his team wasn't mentally strong enough, wasn't tough enough. I mean, you're playing one on one, no fouls. Uh, and loser runs, or yeah, yeah, loser runs. And uh, one ball throws it up on the, on the glass. Whoever gets it doesn't have to run, everybody else has to run. I mean, you think you ain't fighting for your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a brutal, brutal week. <laughs> but we end up uh, <clears throat> we end up playing Michigan State in the first game, and we beat them. I, I played terrible. I think I was two for ten from the game or something like that. I couldn't hit anything. And uh, anyway, the next game we played Illinois, who was like number three in the country, really good, Eddie Johnson, Mark Smith. Holcomb, Harper, the whole deal, they were great. You had a pretty good night. I I score 40. I'm a a guy averaging nine points a game, and I score 40. So, uh, yeah, it ended up pretty good. uh, But still, we were real up and down, you know, until all of a sudden, one night against Iowa, we're down. We end up getting beat by Iowa. But land in the last five minutes of the game, when it looked, you know, when we were behind the whole time, was out there chasing. Kevin Boyle, a six five, six six guy here laying in his six eleven. And rather than bitching and moaning like he used to always do, oh you guys don't get me the ball, you don't do this, you don't do this. it's all about him. He he decided to play for Indiana, you know. And that that's it. I mean, all of a sudden this guy's starting. I mean, he's scoring 15, 20 points a game. He's getting 10 rebounds a game. He's a defensive. He can block shots. He's long. He's big. And we went from being a pretty good team to being a really good team. So I've always heard, like, those kind of stories about that, like, Landon was the catalyst that kind of turned. Tolbert got in his butt is what I read. Yeah. So is that, like, what happened? Like, what what finally got to him? What finally snapped? You know, I didn't hang out with him, even though, you know, he, Whitman, and I were the the three that came in together. And we were good friends. I'm good friends with him now. Uh, I didn't hang out with, with him, you know, and so I don't know. But, you know, he wasn't getting any time. He, the first six games of the Big Ten, I don't know if he played. You know, he just sat on the end of the bench. And I think Knight had gotten to the point, he was basically to the point where he was going to tell him, you know, best thing you can do is go to the NBA. Yeah. You need to get out of here and get, get to the NBA. And I think it was almost like that night, you know, that Iowa game, <clears throat> I think he had a meeting with Landon's mom and dad, you know. And coach told him, you know, he needs to go to the NBA or something like that, you know. And, and Landon's dad was a real stickler, you know, and a real tough, hard-nosed, good good man. And he says, no, we're not doing that. And I don't know if he sat down and talked to him, uh, if Ray talked to him. But he, he, he was a different guy. And it was that noticeable. I mean, it's like a switch flipped. Oh, I mean, all of a sudden you got a guy – you know, you, you know, they got to double team him. He, I mean, he's got that little jump hook. And he can't, you can't stop him. Yeah. And so now Whitman and I are getting a lot Wide more open. open shots. Isaiah's got more room to work. Get to the dish. bracket. Um, yeah, Landon was the reason. I mean, obviously Isaiah was the leader of that team. <clears throat> and, you know, Knight 
when once we got in the tournament, Knight kind of backed off and just let Isaiah run the show. Yeah, kind of do what he wanted. You know, uh, but Isaiah was a guy. I mean, any night that he needed to get forty, he could get forty. He could have. He can do it any time. And uh, I mean, the reason I scored forty against Illinois is they were so concerned about Isaiah. Is, is we got him in what we call the triangle. I mean, he's six, five eleven. And so Ray Tolbert, myself, and Landon are, are running what's called triangle in the around the you know the painted area, and Whitman and whoever out front. And uh, they're so concerned about Isaiah that he's coming off screens, and I just step back, and Isaiah would hit me. I mean, I I'd hit little shots or layups or. Obviously, I got fouled a lot too. I mean, yeah. I shot eighteen free throws that day. So, um, yeah. Did did the ball did the ball just fit in your hand that night, or do you, I mean, could, could you tell something different? Or <laughs> I was so focused. It had been a really difficult week, as I told you, and there were either, even some more things about it that made it even more difficult. And uh, between coach and I. And uh, it, it was just, uh, I was getting open, and uh, I, I, you know, usually I, I kind of had an idea of how many points I, I'd score in a game. Kind of had an idea. But I really had no idea that night. I knew I, I'd played a, a very efficient game. I'd played good. And they took me out of the game. And one of the one of the managers came down and handed me a jersey, and he kind of looked at me. and Goes, you know how many points you had? And I said, uh, I don't know, 25, 20, 26? I don't know. He goes, you had in forty, forty. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, I had no idea. I mean, usually I had a pretty good idea of around how many points, but. Um, yeah, I made 18, 18 free throws. <clears throat> the uh, the next year we're playing at Ohio State, and we get or Michigan State. We get behind Michigan State, so we keep fouling, fouling, fouling. Guy from Michigan State goes nineteen for nineteen from the free throw <laughs> <laughs> You know that record. I think Siegfried, who Knight played with at Ohio State, had had the record sixteen for sixteen. 16. I break the record 18 for 18. Well, the next year I stand on the free throw line and watch Tony and James keep fouling this same guy. I'm like, dude, foul somebody (laughs) Somebody else. else. I keep fouling this same guy. I think he made 19 to 19. Isn't that crazy? That's funny. And then Greg Graham, I think he also made, did he also make 18? I think he made. Jadlow. Jadlow, that's right. I think made seventeen of eighteen, or he maybe you know eighteen, and then missed missed one like eight nineteen or something like yeah. that. I think it was Jadlow, but uh, I think Greg Graham has a record for most maybe most in a row, but it was yeah. over like three or four games, but yeah. not not in a game. Uh, the funny yeah. thing about that is we played Iowa like one of the next games, and I took eighteen free throws in that next game too. Now I was only fourteen of eighteen in that game. But for two games, I was thirty-two for thirty-six. It's pretty so good. Yeah, pretty efficient. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, you, who's up there? So, so good old day. Yeah, Rock from Texas, and then your mom. The good old days loved it. Griselda's my sister-in-law. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is she? Tuning in from Texas. That's awesome. So and Jeff says Ray hits big nuts at IU. Yeah. Yeah, Ray. Ray probably breaks some backboards. He's a great dunker. Yeah. He had huge hands. I mean, so he could, you know, like. Just like a it. volleyball, you yeah. know, he could, and he was a fabulous, fabulous athlete and just a, a great guy to play with. He had a great enthusiasm for the game and, and just had a good heart and just a really, really good guy. Talk, talk about Coach Woodson. Like, I think a lot of people forget about him because he missed, what, he missed, what, 12 games? Is it seen, or <clears throat> Yeah, ten. he missed uh, at least ten games, probably. Yeah, and still won MVP of the Big Ten, yeah, yeah. and we won the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, he came back, and uh, you know, I had had that back operation the year before, and Foyer had done it, and he didn't really have having worked with athletes. He hadn't really worked with a lot of athletes. He didn't know how quickly they could come back, 
And so they redshirted me, so there was no real matter of timetable. But Woody had it done like December 17th or whatever, and he came back, I think, the 1st of February. And six weeks, yeah. and we were, you know, we he led us to the Big Ten championship. And, and like I said, Woody in '79, when he played on the Pan American teams, he was the best player on the team, he was the best player in college basketball. He could score. Um, he was just, he was a great leader. I mean, I remember being at Illinois when I was a freshman, and he went for 48 against Illinois at Illinois. Uh, at I Illinois. mean, it was just. He was so good and such a good guy. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he was Woody was, but he came back and led us to a Big Ten championship, and then we got beat. Uh, I think we played Virginia Tech, I think first, and beat them, and then we went to Louis, or we went to Lexington, and we got beat by Purdue. Yeah. Arnett Hallman and Joe Barry Carroll. <coughs> that that team went to the final four. Yeah, they got the final yeah. four. They, yeah, they yeah. went to the final four and Kiki Vandeway right up here. Shut them shut them down. down so yeah. uh but uh yeah, Woody was a tremendous player and he had a he had a tremendous career. So a couple of things. I don't I I want to <laughs> circle back to Woody in a second, but what do you think? Okay, so Coach Wooden's from here, from Centerton up the road. But do you think he just had a run of good players for 20 years or do you think it was outstanding coaching or do you think it was a general contractor in LA or, uh, what? and you can, you can, you're, you're asking me about John Wooden. You can yeah. dodge that question yeah. if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The people of Martinsville have been good to me. So I'm yeah, not say. there we go. Uh, I would say that, uh, Sam, Sam Gilbert had <coughs> a lot to do with that. Helped. Yeah. I mean, that, that's not taking anything away from John right. Wooden being a coach. Right. He was a great coach. Not always easy getting great players to play for one another. Sure. You know, and to play with one another. He got he got them to play for one another. I grew up watching UCLA. I loved watching UCLA. I mean, hell, they never lost. Right. I thought, I thought Bill Walton was the greatest college basketball player I ever saw. Really? I mean, the way he could rebound and outlet and things like that. I mean, the guy before him, Jabbar, I mean, Al Sender at the time, how good was he, yeah. you know? I mean, and then all the, you know, Sidney Wicks and Curtis Rowe and the whole group. I always tell the story that I always had to laugh that uh, Swin Nader went to UCLA. Mm -hmm. When he was at UCLA, he never played because he played behind, I think, Walton. Mm -hmm. When the NBA draft came... He was number three. He took. He was the third player taken in the NBA, and, when, and he wasn't good enough to play at UCLA. Yeah. I mean, they they always tell the story about like when they first won the NCAA championship, that they came home and played the freshman team. The freshman team had Al Sender. They beat him. Yeah, the freshman team beat the NCAA champs by twenty. I mean, you want to know how much talent they had right. at, at the time. I mean, John Wooden was a great coach. Obviously, he's a great man. He's a, a religious man, uh, wrote a lot of books and things like that. But um, the word was, it all. the word always was, I mean, Knight used to talk about it all the time, you know, that, that uh, yeah, was, I don't know exactly what Sam Gilbert did, but uh, if they had any needs, he usually took care of them, I think. Care so, of, yeah. But... Uh, Ten, 10 national championships is in, incredible, you, <laughs> no matter what you do. Even if you are getting some help along the way. You know, still, yeah. 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 Hang the banner. Yeah. So and he was a great player, too. I mean, obviously, he yeah, was an All American at Purdue. Yeah. Two, two state championships here. The only ones yeah. we have here in high school. I mean, I mean, he won, you know. Can't take anything away from him as yeah. far as that. He was a fabulous player, great player at Purdue. And, uh, I never had the chance to meet him, but uh, I loved watching UCLA grow up. You know, I hated when Notre Dame beat them, you know. Uh, I don't know. I, I was the kind of guy who always just thought the best team should win. Yeah. You know, I, I was never rooting for the underdog. I always wanted the team that was the best because I knew how difficult it was when you're the best and you got the target on your back. Everyone's taking their shots at you. It's tough being yeah. that guy, you know. Uh, and uh, UCLA always was. Did you ever get to play UCLA? Did you? 
You never did. Yeah, I was going to say, they, I don't remember. After I left, I, I remember Hillman and those guys played because Reggie Miller yep. went off on them, I think, in Madison Square, yeah. I think. But, yeah, we never played uh, UCLA when, when I was there. So, summer after you win the national championship, Landon gets in an accident. Yeah. So, talk, take us through that. Yeah, I told the story the other day. Um, you know, you know, Landon finally started playing. You know, we win the national championship. And so then I'll kind of the you know, kind of went off in his head that hey this is this is a pretty good deal light bulb went yeah. off yeah uh, you know and he started lifting weights and he started working out and I can remember uh, when I saw him at the hyper I was getting ready to go home for the summer I think we had been there for the first summer session or something I was going home for a month or so and I saw him we played at the hyper. And he was about 6'10", 6'11", and about 280, and just a... Ripped. Ripped, and enormous. He was just... I thought, man, nobody's going to stop him next year. He'll be so good, you know. He'd be the number one overall pick, yeah. do you think? Yeah, after, you know, the season, yeah. you know. I mean, even though Isaiah had left, they were still going to have him and Witt and I. And we, we, you know, if Isaiah stays, we're definite... Number one. Probably number one in the country again, for sure. Anyway, I went home after <clears throat> playing with him and stuff and seeing him. I was in the field. I, we were cultivating. I remember uh, just because I was a national championship didn't mean that I didn't have to work. Still had to go work on the farm. <laughs> so we were up. We were <laughs> nice cultivating. Rain, I, I can remember exactly where I was, what, what farm we were at. And it was around noon. And my mom would, you know, we had CB radios, you know, and she would. Hey, you know, dinner's ready or whatever, and you'd you'd stop and get in the pickup, you drive home and or whatever. And she says, uh, you need to know that BLT was in a in a uh major accident. BLT meaning Big Land and Big Turner. Land and Turner. And uh so that night I got in the car, drove down, picked Whitman up, went to Methodist Hospital. And there he was, laying in his bed, you know, he was in a coma. And uh, here the, the huge man that I had seen when I left campus was, you know, laying in a bed and I moving. Halo and the whole bitch. Yeah, yeah. had the whole deal. And uh, I think Ray ended up getting him to kind of wake up. I mean, you know, Ray would go and see him every day and talking to him and everything, but... Uh, of all the people that I played with, he would have been the guy that I, I would have said can, would not be able to handle that situation. No way. Yeah, because you said earlier he used to he bitch and moan about yeah, everything. always bitching and moaning. And, and yet he has done a tremendous job of handling the situation. He goes around and speaks. Um, and, I mean, when I see him at the IU games or the Pacer games, he's always, you know, great, great with my kids. He loves my kids. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just tragic. You know, you talk about things can change so quickly. Yeah. I mean, here's a guy that's got the world by the ass all of a sudden. And everything he's been through, you know, and to finally, he finally sees the light. And then he, he's in an automobile accident and he's paralyzed. Terrible. And did he fall asleep? I, I've heard. I don't know. Um <clears throat> You know, was it, I think Ray, was Ray with him maybe, or no, there was somebody else with him. There was yeah, another was couple. Ray, though, yeah. They were on, going they were on the, Island. they yeah. were going to Kings Island yeah. and going on that 46, yeah. which I know it really well because when, when I was doing the games for IU on TV, I lived in Cincinnati. Okay. And so I would always, before the game, I would drive up 74 around the 465 down 37. On the way home, I would take 46 and I just kind of take my time, you know, kind of wind down after being on TV and, you know, calling the game, not get in a hurry. And so I've, I've driven that 46 and it's winding crazy, you know, narrow, tight. But uh, I don't know that he fell asleep. I mean, it was an early morning, I think, when they, when they wrecked. But uh, he just happened to land on his head. And I don't know that, uh, you know, I think he only bruised 
the spinal cord, but this uh, it just just enough. Yeah, just enough. It doesn't heal. It's one of the other things. And you think of like all the accidents that happen and people walk away from or get hurt, but he went, he landed on top, right on on the hood, on the the roof. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, it rolled. So he landed on the on the roof, I think, and uh, I don't know, but uh, I know it was a huge loss. I mean, obviously for him. I mean, he still got drafted. Boston Celtics used their last draft yeah, pick, pick in the, in the yeah. second round, I think, to pick him. And uh, but yeah, he would <clears throat> he would have been the number one draft pick, and. And you guys would have been loaded again. We'd have been pretty, pretty darn good. You'd been hard to beat. That's if for Isaiah sure. hadn't went pro, we'd be really, really good. Yeah. But that was pretty much known, or at least known by us, that he was going. And uh, so that was a good move. And who won the championship that year? It would have been in 82. Carolina. Carolina. Michael yeah. Jordan is Michael, a freshman. That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a nice run, two in a row of that. And then 83 was North Carolina State. Yeah. yeah. And then we've always kind of talked about, like, Coach has got three. He very easily could have six or seven. I mean, 75, that one slipped away. 80. 70, 76, he gets it. 80 slips away. 81, he gets it. Anderson. Yeah. Um, 80, 83, my year, we were number one in the country. Preseason, yeah. right, when the season started, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that's five. And then 92, 93, if he gets both of those – you know what I mean? That's seven. If he only gets one of those, that's six. Yeah. I mean, he's like that. And, and I know no one's going to feel sorry for him or, or whatever, but, I mean, it's like if he gets a ball to bounce his way a couple times, I mean, he's he's got six or seven, you know. So I just I almost, you know, I I almost feel like he's underappreciated. Like as good as he is and everyone, he's even better than what he gets credit yeah, for. Yeah, you know he could I mean? have easily had a, a number of more. Yeah. And then, you know, you win it. You put all those together, and now you're starting to get more kids. You won it again in 92 or 93. Now you get more kids, so maybe you wins one in 95, 96. Then you get more, you know what I mean? I mean, mean even in, what, 73? Went to the Final they, Four, yeah. They got the terrible call, yeah. downing to get downing his fifth foul. Yep. Yeah, yeah. When it looked like it was probably a charge. It was a walk. block charge, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, – but and, and the thing now that – you know, you, you see people and you talk to them and they say, how's coach? And I say, well, he's not, he's not good, you know. But uh, he's, you know, he's he's a different person. I mean, he's, you know, he'll talk and he's fun and everything. He's, that intensity is not there like it used to like be. Like it used now to be. That he's fighting uh, this dementia. But uh, the sad thing is, is all the great things that he accomplished in his life He's not able to enjoy because he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember, yeah. You know, and that's too bad because he uh, he had a lot of great teams and uh, and he created a lot of great players. Not that they probably weren't good players for anyway, but he uh, he he helped you be able to look at yourself and see how you could make yourself better. Yeah, I, I want to ask when he came back to the hall finally and he walked out there. Were you there, were that, you there that day? I was. Yeah. How was that emotional wise? Amazing. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was tore. Yeah, I mean, it was tell. a full house, and uh, you know, to see people like uh, Cuban and Sage Steele and people like that come back to see that moment. Yeah, that was nice. I, you know, he. I, I don't know if he remember any of it. I think he probably remembered Vital a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, because we were back in Cook Hall, and we kind of watched the game from back there. And I mean, the sad, saddest thing of all was that our team couldn't beat Purdue on a day like that. I mean, how the hell do you yeah. let <laughs> how the hell do you let Purdue beat you on that day? I and, mean, I mean, they played all. I mean, Purdue didn't play that well, no, and and I mean, we played just, worse. Yeah, yeah. I it, mean that kind of that kind of stuff. Just I mean back. Back in the day when his teams were good, that kind of thing just didn't happen. Well, and I felt like – so the thing that stuck out to me about that is they went back in the locker room, and the current team didn't see any of that. I felt like they should have stayed out there and, and watched yeah. that and experienced that and said, 
this is why this place is sold out every yeah. day. This is yeah. why it's special that's to play here. Banners hanging that's out. why I there's mean, banners. That's yeah. like when you know my boys and I'll go to the games, and you know you, there'll be ha- half the crowd will be there. And I said, you know, it's just I said, and I, I never played a Big Ten game here that it wasn't just jam packed. Yeah, I can remember going even when Midnight Madness. Midnight Madness at IU was not like the rest of the country. Yeah, but we would be there hours before. In line in the snow in October yeah. sometimes, and you know, as many seats as they'd have available to just watch you guys run a normal practice, no dunking. I mean, no the only times I can remember the corners not being full was when the students would go Christmas home over break. Christmas holiday and we'd tournament. Have that yeah. holiday yeah. Ter- tournament. Yeah. But even it was a majority of the place was full. Full, yeah. You know, but a Big Ten game. I mean, to, to think that you'd come and people weren't filling the seats. I mean, but. Uh, yeah, it was different. I felt like um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I forgot what I was going to ask you. I I, I don't know. I, did I, you go to? Did you get to go down to French Lick with that? Were you down there? I was. That was awesome too. Yeah, that That's... was awesome, and it was awesome that Karen brought Coach over. Yeah, and he spent. I mean, he was there a good three hours, I think, and to yeah. everybody talked to him and saw him, and and it was good for Woody too, and. Uh, Mr. Crab said he was pretty sharp that day. He was pretty sharp. Yeah, and uh, um, you know, I, I I think he enjoyed the day. I mean, I don't know that he knows who who you are when he's talking to you, but he still talks basketball and things like that. It was good for Woody to to be there and see everybody, and and also give a shout out to uh, you know the job that Scott Dolson has done. I think he's done a tremendous job as a new athletic director. Uh, obviously, on the football, he's got the football moving in the right direction, and now it's time to uh, get the basketball team involved too. So back where it belongs. Yeah, I don't know what I'm more excited for this year, though the second the, the IU football, but I, I can't wait to see Woodson's teams take the court. It's going to be totally. Yeah, I mean the the disappointing things about the the teams that we've had in the last. I mean, I, I used to go down and see Tom Crean, and I liked Tom. And uh, and I liked his teams. He was a good recruiter. He had some good teams. I mean, that one team he had with uh, – Vic and Cody and – Yeah. Um, Jordan Halls. Will. The disappointing yeah. thing was is that he didn't ever work defensively. I mean, hell, we could score 90 points, but we'd give up 100. Yeah. You know? I mean, and – and you know, and and the, one of the la- last games, you know, we played Syracuse in the in the tournament, and we about the first four time four or five times we came down the floor, they're in that one three one zone or three two zone, whatever yeah. they play, and our team acted like they didn't have <laughs> look. Yeah. Syracuse is in a zone. Syracuse no kidding. Zone, right? yeah. Have yeah. they done anything other than that for the last 30 years under Bayheim? <laughs> I mean, that's the only defense they play, and yet we hadn't scouted and we hadn't done anything, and we looked like we were lost. I mean, it looked like a bad Y team. You yeah. Know what I mean? And, and <laughs> I mean, it was just incredible. You think, what the hell have you been doing all week in practice? And the thing that frustrates me about it, he coached at Marquette for nine years. He played against Syracuse 18 times or more in the tournament. He knew, I mean, it's not like it was the first time he'd ever seen it. And it's a two, three zone. Those, yeah. kids, those kids have played against a two, three zone at that point in time in their life. It's a matchup. I mean, times. they're yeah. matching yeah. up three, two, two, three, yeah. you know, yeah. they're matching up. Okay. I mean, but you watch the big East teams and there's certain teams, Georgetown and some of those teams, they can play against that because oh, yeah. they're used to playing it yeah. against it. You know, I mean, hell, I, 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 so, yeah. I was dumbfounded. I was like, what have you been doing all week in practice? You know, and I asked Fisher, and he just said that they rarely work defensively, you know, for Tom. And and the the bad thing about the last couple of years is our guys don't get any better. Yep. I mean, how much better was Jackson Davis this year than he was the last year? Well, he wasn't really any better. His numbers are good. Well, somebody's got to score, yeah. and somebody's got to rebound. So, um you know, I used to tell my kids when Kevin Garnett was with the Timberwolves, I said, somebody's got to score. And so his numbers are going to be good no matter what. But, you know, I watch Purdue and Painter's teams. Individually, they get better. And as a team, they get yeah. better. You know, I watch our team. You know, I had I had great hope for the point guard from Lafayette. Yeah, fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. And he, he has done nothing. Yeah. 
He's really he leveled out it. after about the first year. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing I, I've always wondered about, you know, not only in, we're not getting better individually, not getting better as a team, is we can't shoot the damn ball. That's I mean, so, how can you be Indiana and not be able to shoot? That's why Indiana has been built off. In for, today's world, yes, with that shoots. three point line, yeah. you've got to have at least two on the floor at all times, and most of the time, three that can step out and hit that and, and hit, that it, hit it consistently. Yeah. You know, now a couple of the, the guys we had for freshmen this year, I mean, that Mr. Basketball from, uh, I don't know all their names, uh, but the one from like up around Warsaw, I mean, hell, he can't shoot. Yeah. I mean, he might be a nice high school player that can get inside and whoopsie do. And I, I need somebody that can shoot the basketball. Yeah. You know, and uh, you've got to have people that can shoot the basketball. So, I mean, the guy that shot it the best, I think, left. This year, Ar so Armand uh, Franklin, Franklin, yeah, and the same with Jackson Davis. I mean, he's a fine player, but if he thinks that he's gonna, he's ready for the NBA. I mean, the NBA, you you don't have six eight post guys. Yeah, you know, I mean, can you imagine what the Gobert or whatever his name is going to do to him when they yeah. if he's a six eight post guy? Yeah, yeah. You ever get you've got to be able to step out 18, 20, 22 feet and hit the jump and shot consistently, <laughs> and. uh so far, he's not shown that he can do that. But did you did you see what he said about his meeting with Coach Woodson? He he said that he was ninety nine percent sure he was going to the NBA. He was done. New coach coming in, new regime. Let's just make a clean cut. I'll go to the NBA. And his dad said, "You need to at least talk to the new coach, see what he has to say. You know, give him give him a chance or whatever." So they go into the meeting, and they're ninety nine percent sure they're going to the NBA. And Coach Woodson said, this is according to Jackson Davis, Coach Woodson said, yeah, you're a fine player and you score this many points, but let me show you some film. And he hits the button and he said, you know why you missed that shot? Because you were leaning to the left. You know why you missed this shot? And it was all film of everything he had done wrong. And that's how he was trying <laughs> to get him. That's right, because I talked to Woody. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't read it or anything. Woody told me, he says, I put a, a thing together. And he says, I put, it, put only his negative, all the negative yes. plays. And he said, after about five or six minutes, Jackson Davis looked at him and said, "You just made a tape of me, all my bad plays." And Woody's like, "Yeah, that's that's exactly right. That's how many bad plays, and you're never going to make it in the NBA if you have doing those, that stuff, doing that kind of stuff." Yeah, yeah. So I and and credit to Jackson Davis for saying okay, and, and his dad and his said, dad, okay, yeah, his dad said you're right. Yeah, so we need to go back to the drawing board here. Yeah, so what. What do you think went wrong with Archie? Like, I feel like Archie could have X and O, but I just felt like he was fighting them the whole time. And I, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but. You know, it's so different now. Um, you know, they play in their AAUs. And, you know, from the time they're seven or eight years old, somebody's patting them on the ass, telling them how great they are. And I think it's hard for some of these coaches to get on them and tear them down and build them up the yeah. way you need to. It's difficult. <clears throat> and uh, Archie had had great success at, at uh, Dayton. Dayton. But I've had some people say, who, who, who isn't successful at Dayton? I mean, everybody's successful at Dayton. I don't know. I was disappointed when they, uh, uh, you know, some of the hirees. I mean, obviously when they, Pick Sampson. I mean, that was an absolute disaster. And I got in trouble because I kind of spoke my mind and said, you know, I wouldn't hire that guy to coach my fifth grade girls team. Yeah. And, uh, but it kind of played out in the end that he was exactly who I thought he was. And now he's taking his show to Houston and it's still exactly what it, what it always has been. Yeah. You know? And then they come back to play in assembly hall during the tournament and we're yeah. still reeling from the yeah. penalty. You know what I mean? It's like, or if that's not some irony there. But know. I don't know exactly what. Uh, he didn't seem, but I guess my main problem again is those two things. I mean, our players weren't individually getting better. They didn't get bigger. They didn't get stronger. They didn't get better. And we don't have anybody can shoot. Yeah. I mean, you've got to have people that can shoot the basketball. Yeah. You can Surely have, you can find somebody that can shoot the basketball. In this state, I would think so. You know what I mean? The, and – as much as it pains me to say it, I think Painter is a really good coach. He is a damn good coach. Yeah. His teams get better. Yeah. 
consistently improve throughout the season. They are not the same team in the tournament yeah. as they are in the Big Ten. Yeah. They play, and they play with confidence. I mean, not only at home, which they always play there well, but they play, and they play very good against all the good teams. Matt has, a, has done a fabulous job, and his teams get better. The individuals get better. I mean, hell, that big guy that he's got right now, yeah. he couldn't walk and chew gum. And yeah. by the end of the year, they could throw it in there. And, I mean, all he has to do is turn and lay it in. Yeah. And the, I mean, he's he's, he's the Harms be, kid with the oh, with the hair. Yeah. He was he was not very good at the beginning, and no. he just got better and better and better. And you know, yeah. I mean, nine times in a row, right? Yes, nine in a row. Yes, Purdue has beaten IU yeah. nine <laughs> times in a row. So you can't throw the banners out anymore. Oh, we got five. Well, you haven't beat them in in five years. You know, it's nine in a row. Yes, nine. In a row. Yeah. That is just. It's like on Ferris Bueller. Nine uh, times, right? Nine <laughs> times. It's just incredible. I can't imagine. I mean, see, and the thing that's with coming to an end this year, boys. I'm I never you. lost to Purdue at home. I only beat them once on their court because it was hard as hell to win yeah. up there. But I never lost to them on my um, home. See, court. and that—that's the thing that I think, like with Painter, like with some of the recent teams in Bloomington. You don't know, like, they're going to come out, and if they don't play good the first four or five minutes, they're like, yeah, forget, you know, they yeah. just kind of lay down. That never happens with painters teams. They know you never catch them no. on a night where they give no effort and they just lay down and mail one in no. or whatever. But some of the recent teams coming, I mean, you, you don't well, because know. Because he put, he'll put their ass on the bench, and they'll stay there Yeah, the, the, the way it should be. But now, like Mr. Kitchell said, you don't – most coaches won't do that. I don't – Yeah, I don't most of them Archie don't do Eberle that. Them. No, yeah. they, they don't uh... – and the transfer portal now is a free for all, so that makes it even harder. You that's, get on. That's you, crazy. And yeah. now they're going to start paying them. Yeah. And that's going to be an absolute mess. I mean, anytime you get money involved in that type of situation, uh, it'll be a mess. And uh, you know, like the, like we were talking about earlier, the Alabama quarterback he's he has not taken a snap in a game yet. And he already has uh, over a million dollars in uh, endorsement. endorsements. Yeah, he's he's 18 years old. Like you said, hasn't hasn't played a college game yet. Hasn't played one play in college. Already has a million. And where does that stop? You know what I mean? Well, uh, the things that you think about is uh, like Woody says when you when you're recruiting. If one of the first things, if they're a big time athlete, they'll ask you is how much money am I going to be able to make at your school? You know. Well, then you get into the situation of an offensive line blocking for a quarterback the quarterback's making a million dollars right the offensive lineman at what point in time are they going to look at him and say pal we're not sharing the sugar a little bit Let's, we, we yeah. might not be able to block as good as as i'm a, I'm a little slow today yeah, yeah i feel a little slow today <laughs> unless you feel like patting my pocket uh, a little, a little bit. bit yeah i like steak too you know yeah i, I like mean, lobster so too it, it'll be interesting to see how it all works out but the ncaa has not done a very good job as far as handling that and now you see these you know texas and oklahoma they're moving the sec yeah. I mean, how long before it's just you know the big 10 is a huge conference the sec uh out I, west I have have one, one out yeah. west and then you know maybe like four huge conferences and now they don't even need. They don't even need the NCAA. FedEx truck pulling up to Kentucky doors. Yeah, they, yeah. I, They've been doing that for decades, though. I I read the other day that they said that Kentucky has the training manual on how to pay players. You just call them and they'll fax you the, <laughs> the training right. manual. The, this is how you. They've do it. always done an outstanding job yeah. down there. They've been very now, good at it. I got a question for you. What was your favorite gym to play in of all time, and and uh, your least favorite? Oh, favorite gym. Outside of the obvious. I was going to say, yeah. Placement banners in it have to be pretty cool to play in, though. Um, I'm trying to think all the places. You could play. say the hyper. We've yeah. been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like playing in Mackey. It's a great, great place to play. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, not a fake floor. I mean, it's and it, they make it dark. You know, they turn the lights off, and it's, you're kind of on stage. Um, it was fun playing at uh, Carmichael at North Carolina yeah. before they had the Dean Dome. Yeah, Carmichael's 
kind of like uh, Duke's place. It yeah. was small, and they had the little kids would sit and turn. Oh, the, the manual the scoreboard. The manual oh, wow, yeah. In the corners. So that was kind of fun. Um, what about Jenison Fieldhouse? Is oh, that, in uh, Michigan State? Yeah, I've always heard it was really loud, and they're right on top loud, of you. They're right on top of yeah, you. The students what... were right on top of you. They used to yell at night, so they were on him so hard. I always hated when you guys had to go to Minnesota because I, I hated the floor, hated the marina, and it looks like you guys can go up there with – a team of the best talent ever to play at IU, and they could have five guys from Minnesota, and they'd they'd be in it the whole way. And I'm like, yeah, you were definitely on stage there because that that floor elevated. was raised elevated. about three or four feet above. And I, is it because there was hockey underneath, or what? What was the point no, of the raised I, floor? I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's kind of like you were on stage up there. It was a, it was a different different place to play. The shooting was a little different. Um. I never, we never played in the huge places like they play it now. The Metrodome or the, you know, because we didn't have that yet. Uh, they didn't have that. They weren't having the NCAA tournaments in those places. And those, sometimes that's kind of hard when you don't have a background to shoot. Sure. You know, uh, you have to get used to it. But uh, um, I'm trying to think where are some of the places. Um, they did play at Iowa. Carver Hawkeye. Oh, yeah. I hated places. <laughs> now, is it, does the ground level is the top row and then you walk down to yeah, the, yeah, you walk down to the new one. Well, I only played there once. Okay. We used to play in the old one where the, I mean, how you go into practice and they're having phys ed classes and all kinds of stuff going on in the old arena. And you get those farmers, all the farmers, you know, they ain't got nothing to do in the middle in the of winter. December, January, February. <laughs> they come out and screaming and yelling. It's crazy. <laughs> I always played pretty good at Illinois. I played good at Purdue. <clears throat> you rather um, win on the road or win at home? What's that? Would you rather win on the road or win at home? Well, I expected to always win at home. Yeah. I don't know how we didn't lose very many times at home. Yeah. Uh, and it was fun winning on the road. That's always um, my favorite. You know, my senior year, or my last year, not my senior year, but my redshirt year, my last year, we beat uh, Notre Dame on the road. We beat Kentucky at home, and we beat Purdue on the road. You swept Purdue that year, yeah. Yeah, we, we swept Purdue that year. So that was a... Uh, That's a pretty good run right there. That was a big deal. Those were three teams. My dad always... Always talked about that. He said we, you know, got them all. We got them all in the same year. That was important. Did Did your family grow up Purdue fans, or did you really have any allegiance like growing up? I was up? kind of a Purdue fan. Yeah, growing up. Um, I mean, I went to Purdue. I probably went and watched Purdue play three or four times growing up. Uh, it was only forty five. I was gonna say you were pretty close. Home. And I was a huge Mount fan. I mean, who, how the hell couldn't you love Rick watching Mount. Mount fall out of bounds, shooting it up over the, <laughs> you know. Now, he might shoot 50 times in a game, but. To score 30. Uh, you know, another great stat I always tell people about, you know, we were talking about Jimmy Rail earlier. Yeah. Is uh, in 69, Purdue plays UCLA for the national championship. Mal hits his first shot of the game, misses his next 14 in a row, and still scored 28. <laughs> <laughs> now, you think he's got the green light? You're right, you're right. Right. You know, people say shoot or shoot, stuff baby. About, about, you know, you know, Knight, things like that. I said, if you think Knight's going to allow anybody to miss 14 in a row and he's going to still have you on the floor, I said, you're nuts. Yeah, yeah. No one at IU has ever missed 14 in a row because after you miss about five in a row, you <laughs> yeah, don't see gone. the floor. Yeah. You're gone. We'll find somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Tim says your brother Tom was a great baseball player at Purdue. Great baseball player. Yeah. Um, I, was, uh, I was in Evansville one day and uh, – I was working with the people I was working with, and there was a kid, kind of a young guy, standing off to the side, and he says, are you Ted Kitchell? And I said, yeah. And he says, your brother's Tom. And I said, yeah. I said, he said, oh, he said, he said, he brought some joy to my heart. And I said, how's that? He says, I went to the University of Evansville and played baseball at Evansville. 
he said, and Andy Bennis. Okay. Yep. Number one draft, you know. Played for was, the Padres. Yeah, was coach or he was pitching. He said, and we're playing Purdue. And he said, your brother hit two of the mammoth home runs <laughs> off him that I've ever seen. He said, he, he just knocked him totally out of the park. He said, nobody did that against Bennett. He said, and your brother did it twice in the same <laughs> in game. The same game. <laughs> but he was, a, he was a great player from the time he was six years old and playing Little League. He, he, he led his team in hitting, and he just had tremendous hand-eye coordination. And uh, he was a great, great, great baseball player. I loved to go watch him play. I didn't get to watch him play as much because I was at IU and he's six years behind me. But the last couple of years, I used to get a chance to go to Purdue and watch him. And who would come to the games? Katie. Yeah, that's He'd funny. come out. He'd sit with my mom and dad and, hey, how you doing? He was always just so kind to me whenever I saw him. Uh, Gene Katie's just about as good as it gets. That's funny. Um, so did, did, would he talk hoops with you during the baseball game or was that kind of, um, yeah, he might talk a little bit. He might ask how coach was or, you know, how's Whitman doing or things like that. But he might also talk about golf. How, how's your golf game? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he likes to play golf and do things like that. And, uh, uh, he's been really good to coach. While coach goes, I think he talks, calls him a lot and talks to him. And he's a, uh, he's a good man, good, good heart, good guy. It, you had to have a, you had to have a yin for the yang when, when IU was good and Purdue had to have Keedy to make it, you know what I mean? That, that good pushback that, that made the whole series even better, I think. Yeah, we played them when they had, uh, some questionable guys. And that was when they had, uh, What's his name? Yeah, the assistant uh, coach um, was bringing in some uh, some shady uh, it dudes. Was, uh, not Kendrick, not Frank Kendrick, but uh, that's who I was thinking of. You, yeah, you're thinking of Frank. It wasn't Frank. Uh, who was the coach between uh, like when they beat us in '80? This guy was coach, but it, but remember he had uh, Scooby and he had Keith uh, Edmondson. Yeah, and they were dirty. Yeah. yeah, and that wasn't Katie's team. Katie came in after him. I can't. The guy, guy, he came from Transylvania, I think, in Kentucky. Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, I'll I think of it. But anyway, when Katie got there, <clears throat> my cousin John played for Purdue, and he talked about. I mean, we had some. We had some deals with Purdue or Edmondson, you know, he cold cocked uh, Whitman. And that also was during the time when coach had Jack on the, on his TV show. Remember? Oh yeah. Jack, <laughs> the donkey. Yeah, donkey. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I'm sure they didn't appreciate that much. That, that was, see, and that's, that's the opinion. You couldn't, t if you did that today, oh, that oh was, my God. That was funny because yeah. nobody knew it was going to happen. Right. When we're watching the show. Poor Chuck Marlowe. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine having to do the Bob Knight yeah. show like he did and just take a beating? After yeah. hell, yeah. too. Would you oh, mean? just take a beating. So for, for you guys that are listening that don't know this story. It's Knight, on Google. Yeah, it's Knight had a, had a a Sunday morning show. And Chuck Marlowe hosted it, and Coach Knight brought a donkey out with a Purdue blanket <laughs> over it, and he said, I asked the AD of Purdue to come down, and he declined, so I got the next best thing. Yeah, he had a Purdue hat. Right. Yeah, right had, yeah. 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 And he said, his name's Jack. I think you can figure out the rest. <laughs> right. And Chuck Marlowe was, like, mortified. He doesn't know what to yeah. do or what to say. Every week. And so then yeah. Coach would sit there and ask him questions, right. and then they'd pan over to the donkey, and here's the donkey with that dumb, <laughs> dumb-ass look <laughs> on her face, you know? <laughs> With a Purdue and, hat and on. Coach is just serious as can be asking these <laughs> questions, you know, and everything. It was oh. a, he was in his heyday. You got to tell him the story that Chuck Crabb told us last week about at the Olympic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coach made him announce. Yeah, so. Talk about Kentucky hate. So, so at the 84 Olympic trials, they, they've they got everyone there and the crowd's all there. And he said. Out in uh, L.A., wasn't it? Yeah. It was, I think it was in Assembly okay. Hall. That's where the trials yeah. were. Yeah. And so, you know, all the players are there, all the coaches and people are watching it. So Lee Ross is what before Katie Greg Martin saying. 
The, Lee Rose. Lee, Ro- Lee, Lee Rose. Rose. Yes, yeah, yeah, so you're yeah, right. Yeah, Lee yeah, Rose. That's yeah, who he yeah, was. Yeah, yes, yeah. And he was a great coach, but he had some really questionable guys. Yeah. And uh, we had some. But Katie. Thanks, Greg. Katie came in and cleaned that up, and yeah. things got a lot better. Sorry, dude. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, me. you're good. Um, so he said that Coach Knight was sitting about, you know, Chuck's at a spot on the side of the court. Coach Knight's about 15 rows up watching everything. So he yells down, hey, Chuck, hey, Chuck. He said, announce all the assistant coaches for the for the team. So he said, okay. And, and their schools. Yeah. And so he says, um, you know, we like to recognize our coaches, you know, um, George Raveling from Iowa. And everyone gives a polite clap. And he said, uh, Don Donahauer from Dayton. Everyone gives a. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and then he said, and Eddie Sutton from Kentucky. Everybody said, boo, start booing. And Knight's up there clapping like this, doing this, and just got the crowd. And Chuck said he was so proud of himself for getting the crowd to boo Eddie Sutton oh, because he was God. from Kentucky. And he said, whole joke he up. set just it up, to... yeah. And, and that's what's funny is like, this is our little stage right here. Night stage is Assembly Hall with 17,000 yeah. people and, and a TV show. And, <laughs> and he just gets to play and do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he he said he said that Chuck said that Coach Knight was so proud of himself that yeah. he oh, got sure. got the whole oh, whole yeah. stadium. I, I would say Chuck Marlowe probably had the toughest job oh, in the yeah. world after a loss on, on, on oh. Saturday. Saturday yeah. show or and the thing is, he he, you know, Knight might call you and say, "Okay, we're going to do it at," and it might be three in the morning. Right, right. <laughs> and Chuck always just tried to be so positive yeah. and everything, and Knight would just. Oh, just rip him and tear him down. It's like, oh, my God. The the other thing that Chuck said, too, was when they were taping uh, Blue Chips. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They called him and said, hey, we need you to be up in Frankfurt for the filming. We're going to have you do some voiceovers. You need to be there tomorrow, <clears throat> 9 o'clock or whatever. And Chuck said, well, I'm leaving in the morning to go on vacation with my family. Coach said, no, filming. We need you up here. And he said, well. All right, I guess I'll be there. And so he canceled his family vacation and went up there and uh, and got a and and did the did the filming with him or whatever because oh, coach yeah. said you know and he said that's not you do, you do what coach says you're not you're not you know what I mean yeah so I got an idea what that is. Brighton was part of the fundraiser we did last week yeah or two weeks ago so. yeah so he's been he's been off though been in you. Puerto Rico for on for vacation so. Yeah. I called him. I said, "We'll probably be running late tonight, so just stop in." So. Right on. Um, Thank you, Brian. So, one of the things that I haven't been able to get to was your time on the FIBA team down in Columbia. What What was that like going going down to Columbia and playing on that team, and just the travel? And I mean, because you're um, probably what nineteen at the time, twenty. I was probably twenty two. Okay. <clears throat> I pl- I play I played for IU all year. Okay, as a ju- I was a junior. That was my Redshirt year junior. after the national championship year. It was a little bit of a struggle, but I, I, I actually had a really good year. I mean, I averaged at most, I think, around 23 points a game, and was I, w- I was close to being the Big Ten Player of the Year. I think they gave it to Kellogg. Clark. And I was second. But anyway, so we ha- we we get in the NCAA tournament. We finished second in the Big Ten, even though we've lost Landon and Isaiah and we finished second in the Big Ten to Minnesota Brewer, Minnesota and Brewer, and those guys, Tucker, they uh, won the Big Ten. We get an NCAA tournament, win our first game. We then we get get hammered by UAB. They beat us by like twenty four. It was a bad beat. So then I come back. I'm off for like a week, and then I uh, go play baseball. I play baseball at IU. I'm a pitcher at IU. I did not know. That. I didn't know that. So, you know, you know, I'm thinking, what the hell's wrong with me? Am I nuts doing this? You know, I mean, because now I got to be at practice every day. Got to be at games. I got to, you know, it's hard to get my arm in shape to throw. Um, when I was in high school, I played against uh, Logan Sport, and they won the state championship like three or four times. And so the one game, they ended up beating me in the sectional three to one. I struck out like 14, and so uh, the Dodgers had gotten real interested in me, and the Yankees had gotten interested in me because I was six foot eight. Sure. I was athletic. I threw hard. And so uh, Knight thought that I should play baseball kind of like Elway 
member with his yep. quarterback he had leverage. So you can have he some He's a big baseball fan, though, too, Wes. Yeah, Coach he is. Yeah. He is. And uh, I could never get my arm in shape, you know. But I ended up, I pitched against Michigan and pitched, pitched and that's when they were really good. I think I got beat five to one or something. And then I, but anyway, so I play the whole baseball season, take another week off. Now I'm off to the, now I'm off to the trials in Colorado Springs at the Air Force Academy, basically then, because they didn't have the facilities. The Olympic facilities. And so I practice, or, you know, you're at these trials for three or four days, but you, you get picked, you're on the USA team. So then you come home and you're home maybe three or four days, and then you're off to Texas. That's where Bob Wetlick was the coach. Okay. Barnum and Bailey Circus has the, uh, where they play. So you don't get to practice there. You got to practice in the old facility, which has no air conditioning. Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, Texas? It's like August. No. In Texas. Yeah. It's like August. I mean, they got fans and everything blowing on the floor. I mean, there's so much sweat and everything else. And so the guys on the team is uh, James Thomas okay. from IU. Doc Rivers is on there. Earl Jones was from the Washington, D.C., something, whatever it was. Antoine Carr. Uh, Fred Reynolds from Texas, El Paso. And uh, I forget all the rest. John Sunbold from Missouri. I forget all the rest of the guys. But anyway... What I'm what I'm telling you is Patrick Ewing and the yeah. the top guys they didn't they didn't go out there. Okay. okay, so I made the U.S. World Team, but I I've always questioned whether or not I was one of the best players. Who knows? It probably didn't hurt that uh, I played for Bob Knight in Indiana. So uh, we you know we practiced for three or four days in the terrible heat and then we're off to knoxville the world's fair in knoxville yep. Yep. so then we leave the world's <clears throat> fair and we fly to miami and <clears throat> then we fly to after we play a couple games in miami then we fly to columbia and the first first couple games are in bogota bogota is like six thousand feet above sea level oh wow, wow. And so we're in great shape. We've been working out everything. You run up and down about twice. Done. And you are done. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, and the other thing is you can't eat the food. Yeah. Anything, it's washed in the water. You can't brush your teeth in the morning. Uh, you know, you have I didn't to take bottled that. water, you know, to brush your teeth. You know, Pannone is my roommate. John Pannone from Villanova. Villanova, yeah. <clears throat> and... When you get off the plane at the airport in Columbia or in Bogota, you look out and here's all these guys standing with these machine guns, and you're thinking, "What the going Where on? Where are we? Yeah, yeah, what is going on here?" So then, every day we'd go to practice, we'd get on the bus, and there's a little guy who had a bag on his shoulder who he'd get on with. It's like you didn't know if he was a newspaper guy or who the hell he was. <laughs> And so we get ready to go to practice, and you'd have motors, uh, one motorcycle in the front, two motorcycles in the front. Along the side, you'd have two motorcycles, two motorcycles, and then on the back, you'd have two and one. We had one, two, three, four, five. Like you had about 12 motorcycles, and every one had a rider, a driver, and a guy sitting behind with a machine gun. Oh, my. That's how it was. I guess... The uh, cartel or somebody told them they were going to kidnap some of the USA yeah. players and things Hold like that. Hold them for hostage. <laughs> and one day we finally got the little guy. What's your deal? Why do you go to the games with us? You know, get on the. So he opened his bag and he had a forty-five in there. Oh wow! I mean, he's this little guy and his gun's about as big as he is. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so we ended up. Uh, the first couple rounds we played in Bogota, we won games. Then we moved down to Calais, Colombia, which was more on the coast. And, okay. And it was it was a lot easier to play. I remember when we played the Colombian team, they didn't they wouldn't sweep the floor and just slip and slide, slide. and you know to any advantage you, they were trying to that get. they could get. So. <clears throat> 
we ended up playing the Russians in the gold medal game. And they beat us 93-92. Doc played great. Doc Rivers played great. Joe Klein was on that team. Mark, kid from Old Dominion. Mark, uh, played in the NBA forever. Mark Allery? Oh, that's... Yeah. I would say Price went to Georgia Tech, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Mark Price was Georgia Tech. But anyway, uh, it was... I was so glad to come home, and my my insides, I, you know, weren't weren't right for my wife says for two or three years, you know, eating their food, food and yeah. all that kind of stuff, and it was just, uh, <laughs> you know, it was it was kind of a wild situation, but yeah, we got a silver medal. Somebody the other day asked me, "Where is it?" I really don't know. It's probably in the safe. But it was uh, it was an okay experience. I didn't get along with Wet Lake real good, you know. I mean, when we started playing, um, I mean, I hell, I was a starter and started, you know, a number of games. And by the end, uh, he didn't, he wouldn't play me. He wouldn't play Joe Klein. There were about three of us he wouldn't play. So uh, it was just kind of a mental. He and I kind of got into it one night when we were talking about how you play against the zone, you know, and he didn't agree with the way that I, and I didn't agree. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes I probably spoke when I shouldn't have spoke, but. It happens. Yeah. You had a pretty good tutor to teach you how to play against the zone, though, I would, yeah, I would, I would I, think. I thought the way we attacked it at IU was much better than the way he was trying to attack it. So, <laughs> what do you uh, want to do, throw it around a perimeter? Anyway, maybe? it was a good experience, but then I got home from that, and I'm not home a week, and now I'm back to IU for Cause it's late like, in the, the fall. last year. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about, you know, you play basketball, then you play baseball, then you play on the world team, and then all of a sudden you're back, and it's just, I was uh, I was worn out. You think it contributed to your back problem your last year? Um, possibly. Um, but you know, I played a long. I I had a good uh, that year. I played played pretty good too. And uh, won the Big Ten again. Yeah, we won the Big Ten championship. But uh, yeah, with four games left, I blew. I uh, I didn't practice working against Duve. And uh, I knew exactly when I did it. I felt because when when I'd had it when I was a freshman, I had the shooting pain down the right leg. Okay, and so once they did the operation, everything it kind of went away. Well, now all of a sudden, when I blew it up, I could feel it down my left leg. So you kind of have that back in your mind. Hopefully, it's not that, that same you know. thing. So we flew to Michigan. <clears throat> flew to Michigan. <laughs> And I didn't say anything to anybody and uh, kind of sat in the bathtub like all night. Got, went to shoot around and, you know, shot around and everything. That night I got taped and then I did my stretching in the shower, you know, big shower where nobody knew what I was doing or where I was. And uh, I started the game and I think I hit a three and I hit a two. And the first time out, I told Tim Garl, I said, you got to take me out. I said, I can't feel my leg from my knee knee down. Oh, wow. So I was afraid I was going to break my leg or right. something. And, you know, I just, I couldn't feel my leg. I mean, it was numb. So, um, you know, they took me out. They lost the game. Uh, the next day, they flew me on a private. They had one of the private planes come up and pick me up and brought me back to Methodist. And a couple of days later, you know, after Foyer, Dr. Hank Foyer looked at me and they operated on me again. So, <clears throat> and, you know, he fixed me. I mean, I've, I've not had any problems since. I always tell him the funny thing about that situation was when I was a freshman and blew my, you know, I had a ruptured disc, I was at Methodist Hospital and they put me in the children's pavilion. And I was, there was like a kid there and a kid there and a kid there and a kid there and a kid there and, kid there and me. <laughs> you know, I'm in this room six, with six of us, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, hell's that guy, you know. <laughs> well, four and a half, five years later, 
Um, same type of thing, except I'm all Big Ten two years in a row. I'm national championship. Two, national championship, two-time All-American. Silver medal. Yeah. I got my own room. <laughs> I got a cop that stands outside the room that doesn't allow anyone in or out, um, you know. That's funny. It was, uh, you know, obviously mom and dad were there and uh, <clears throat> my wife. And, uh, you know, somebody that came up uh, and we kind of laughed about it was Sam Weish. He was the football coach yep. and he did uh, hard, he did tricks. You know, he was a magician like card tricks. And he sat there and did tricks and we kind of laughed and had a good time. Okay. And he was the football coach at IU for what, about 18 months? Yeah, yeah. not very long. Went to but, the Bengals, uh, didn't he? Right yeah, after, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, but he was there during that time. He came up, so. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was disappointing. Uh, and and the other thing is you you hurt your back. It's so late into the year that you don't have time to come back and show people that you can play. play. You know, and we ended up uh, we won won the first couple of games. We beat Wayman Tisdale in Oklahoma and Evansville, I think. And then we went to Knoxville and we got beat by Kentucky. You had beaten earlier. We had beaten them early in the year, sixty two fifty nine. I think they beat us sixty two. Uh. Yeah, but Whitman was kind of out there all by himself. You know, I mean, our offense worked around Whitman and I both. Yeah. You know, but all of a sudden when you only had to guard one guy, it was a lot different than when you had to guard two. You know, Will Sheehy, I, I saw an interview with him, and he talked about um, Cody making everyone on the floor better. You know, you hear the old cliche, oh, that guy makes everyone on the floor better. And he said, you know, before Cody – guys hugged him he couldn't get by him he couldn't get his shot off yeah. cody comes on the floor now this guy plays a step off of him because he's sagging on cody a little bit well that's all he needs is that one step to get by him now he can get to the basket now he can get now he can get his jump shot off and so kind of same thing with that that's what i was telling you with isaiah when isaiah was in the game against illinois they were so concerned with him right that i'm getting i don't need much time you know i and but he's Finding me, I'm mean, getting layups, I'm hitting jump shots. So, you know, we didn't have the three point line, but so, uh, until my last year, year, yeah. And then it was just that year, right? It was like an experiment, and then it went away. I, it didn't go away, but then they move it back. Like, we, it, we had it back, yeah, what, like 21, yeah, NBA almost, yeah, 21 6, yeah. you know, and the ACC was playing at 19 9, oh, yeah. they had it right at the top. Knight would not allow us to even look at it. <laughs> we go through the entire preseason, don't shoot any threes, none. Not allowed to shoot a three. Not allowed to talk talk about it in practice. We don't do anything. Even though Knight told the, at the Big Ten Conference thing, he says, you know, I don't like the three-pointer, but he says, uh, you know, I've got uh, the two best three-point shooters on my team. Uh, there's only one other guy in the league who can who can shoot it, you know. Well, for the entire Big Ten season, they're all trying to prove tonight that they're the guy. Right. Yeah, they're that shoot. third guy that can shoot. He's it. always one step you know, ahead. Yeah, you know, they're trying to prove to him. So anyway, we go to Ohio State. We're ten and zero to start the season, number one in the country, and we get beat. Larry Huggins, Bob Huggins' brother, hits like three threes on us, and we get beat by I think two. <clears throat> so. I'm home, get thrown out of the locker room. All the seniors get thrown out of the locker room. Not allowed to go to pregame uh, or training table after practice. He sends six six managers over to training table to eat our food. <laughs> we have to go to McDonald's or Wendy's to to eat. You know, we're ten and zero, number one in the country. country. We get beat on the road by two at, at Ohio State. At Ohio State. Yeah. and yet we're a bunch of donkeys, a bunch of dogs. <laughs> I don't want them to be around the younger guys. They're bad influence. I don't want them to have anything to do with them, you know? And so he treats us like dogs. We're out there. We'll be practicing. We'll be scrimmaging. And my group, me, Whitman, everything, we'll, we'll, we'll be ahead 20 to 2. Yeah. And the only one, only thing he wants to talk about is the two points. The two points. Right. When they score the two points, he goes, now, see, that's why I can't play you guys. That's why I can't play you. Yeah. There's no way I can play you guys. You guys are a bunch of dogs, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. The last... Like it's Wednesday, we play at Illinois. First game in the Big or second game in the Big Ten. We play at Illinois. 
So I finally go to his locker room and say, Coach, you know, if we're going to do this, you know, uh, you know, we got to get back together, blah, blah, blah. And he just, you know, rips, makes fun of me, rips like, you, you don't care. And, you know, so I feel like an idiot, you know. So we have practice, and with about 15 minutes left in practice, he goes, okay, Whitman, you're in a white, Kitchell, you're in a white. So he puts, us, puts the team back together. Back. We're, we're, we're back in the white shirts. And he says, okay, I want Kitchell outside the three-point line here. I want Whitman outside the three-point line here. I want you in a two-three zone, and I do not want a shot taken that is not a three. And nobody's allowed to shoot it except Kitchell and Whitman. Whitman. You're the only two guys. So for the next 20 minutes, we play against the zone, and we're shooting threes. We haven't been, we haven't been allowed to shoot them all year. Yeah. We go to Illinois. I think he, he, Whitman hits three. I hit two. Our next game, our first three games were at Ohio State, at Illinois, and at Purdue. We go to Purdue. I hit like two or three more. So now all of a sudden we start using the three pointer. We beat Purdue. Everything's okay again. (laughs) But I end up for the year, I think I was 21 to 32 for the year for 66%. Yeah. Yeah. So I led the country in three point shooting. I mean, they never say that because I didn't take enough, you know. But, sure. Sixty-six uh, percent is pretty good. That's pretty efficient. Yeah, from yeah, twenty-two. Line, yeah, you know? from out there. So those weren't cheapies either. Then those were the twenty. Those were the yeah, longer they ones. Were yeah, twenty-two footers. Yeah. yeah. And then you end up playing in Italy for how, how long? Did you? I was only over there probably about I don't know six months or so. Um, Four ligaments in my ankle before I went. Uh, miserable. I went and kind of visited, and uh, you know they were good to me and everything. Um, you know, coach. Coach never really did much for me. He always talked about, you know, I got a lot out of my athletic ability. wasn't wasn't a good athlete. Uh, you know, he'd always. Talk, talk me down and basically tell people how bad I was. But, you know, we got a lot out of him here. We so, coached him up. Yeah. We, yeah. So I, I ended up getting drafted by the Bucks, But I went to Italy and I played over there for a little while. Um, you know, when I took the visit over there, I was over there for about six days. Then I came home. And I was home for about five days, got married uh, at five o'clock on a Saturday evening. And at 10 o'clock the next morning, I was on a plane to Italy. By yourself? With, you know, she was with with me. But it was just, I don't know. You know, the next year I, 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 I played, or I played there for a while. And I was the leading scorer on the team, and I played Played well, but they were looking for a high flying, dunking showman. Showman, I wasn't that. Yeah, you know, I was going. She got shot back and going to the free throw line. I was doing stuff, you know, to try to win a game. But uh, so, and then in the summer league that that following summer, I played with the Bucks and played really well. Uh, but again, they didn't really pass me on a physical, and uh, so then after that, I said, "Heck, I'm tired of chasing this." Yeah. Yeah. So how how does it come about? Like, how do the people in it, I mean, I, I know they have scouts in the States or whatever, but is it a coach of a friend of a friend it's of a Knight. coach? Knight. Knight was basically who was in charge of putting it all together. Okay. I was supposed to make, I don't know, seventy five to $100,000, and I never got near that much. So, and the thing is, what what do you do? You know, I mean... Because I'd had the back operation, they took me, uh, and we were up by, uh, they took me into Yugoslavia. That was an interesting deal, you know, because that was communist country. Yeah. Right? And so when we got to the border, you know, they sit there and look at your, you know, they'd stare you down for 10 minutes, you know. So then you'd go to some hospital. Well, if you've been to anything in the communist, you know, hell, it's, all beat down. Yeah. They don't have any money. They're out of money. 
you know, you go to some hospital and it's like the psycho ward, you know, and they take, you know, they take a uh, picture or, you know, x-rays. You feel like they're probably just pumping you full of lead, you know. I mean, so it was just a weird deal uh, when you're overseas. I mean, it's one thing when you're overseas with your family or if you're with a group and you're traveling. Yeah. You know, we're having a good time. Go there sometime by yourself, you know. Turn on the TV and I'm watching Starsky and Hutch and they're spitting spitting Italian at me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I can't watch TV. You know, you I'd don't sit, know. I'd sit, you know, the, I'd sit and read books. I'd just read all the time is what I would do. And, uh, I mean, I ended up playing Dwight Jones played with us for a while who played at Houston. Okay. And uh, was a nice guy. And, uh, but to tell you the truth, I was happy as hell to get the hell out of there. I, get back home and i mean some of these guys like doing that i guess like playing overseas and stuff like that but i just i just never really enjoyed it much so i know tyra bus um she got a chance to go to europe and play and she was over there less than a month and she came back and she said everything was disinformation it was not nearly the money she was promised it was not and it was a lot and the of, thing is what are you going to do yeah you're over well, there you're, you're going to have some american lawyer yeah tell the italians yeah. hey you owe him money yeah. they're gonna laugh at you yeah you know yeah and you feel like gosh if anything happened to me there's nobody over here you're gives, on... a, gives a damn about me yeah you know, they don't care yeah um now, since that, you know, I've heard that Australia is kind of more Americanized and it's kind of fun playing there, yeah. but, uh, you don't have the language barrier. That's probably, yeah. makes, you know, yeah. Yeah. The Italian thing. I mean, not only the language, but like eating, you know, it, they'd sit down to eat and it's a two hour deal. I mean, I eat, I'm done in 15 minutes. Let's go. Let's, Let's go get out of here. Let's you know, get, yeah. I'm move on. I mean, can't beat that pasta though. Right? Oh, the, the, the pasta was good. I'll give them that. And uh, the shopping in Milan was nice. My wife loved the shopping right, in Milan. Right. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we we were in in Trieste, which Trieste is a way up by the uh, Adriatic Sea. Okay. So we were, and we went into the mountains for training camp, and uh, yeah, it was just I don't know. Was the doctor from the Bucks? Was he right? Um. <clears throat> well, I mean, I've had uh, I've been blessed as far as I got a great wife and you know three great kids, and yeah, I was able to spend a lot more time with my. I mean, I see, you know, I see Whitman, who was playing in the NBA, coaching the NBA, and you know his son was a really good good basketball player, played at Cornell. And, you know, he didn't get a watching near as much because of, of what, having to do what he did in the NBA. But uh, I never I never missed any of my kids' basketball games. They, they, my daughter was a great volleyball player at Ball State. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very fortunate as far as that. And uh, it would have been nice to have played in the NBA for four or five years and, uh, you know, the money yeah. would have been nice. But... Uh, not the worst thing in the world. I did. You do some announcing now, though, don't you? I do. Uh, <laughs> I do football. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Ex basketball player who does football. You, you announce for a pretty good team, though. Yeah, I uh, do a webcast. I do the webcast for the Center Grove. I call them the Center Grove Groovers, but the mm-hmm. Center Grove Trojans, mm-hmm. uh, undefeated uh, state champs last year. And probably will be undefeated state champs this year. So I'm making a prediction if anybody's guessing. <laughs> right. But uh, from what I hear, uh, I'll get to see him. I got a call from the guy I do the games with. And uh, uh, we're supposed to get together and kind of go over things. But I hear that they're very, very good. I mean, Eric Moore does a tremendous job as a coach there. Uh, he just really understands what it takes. His athletes work extremely hard, and uh, because of it, they've won a couple state championships, and I think they're going to win a couple more here soon. Coach Moore's a friend of the show. He's been on. (laughs) Yeah, he sat right there and talked to us for about two hours. Yeah, he's a friend of the show. He's a heck of a coach. I mean, uh, you know, he runs that wing tee offensively, and uh, they're very efficient at it. I, uh, 
you know, you don't see that many people run it, but in high school they can get by running it. In colleges and stuff, it seems like they're not able to do it. But uh, they're very efficient at it, and he's got a great defensive mind. And, uh, I mean, they play in a great conference. I mean, the Mick Conference is as good as it gets. They play some it, cats up there. Yeah, as good as it gets in this state. You know, now, playing Ben Davis, Warren Central, Lawrence. In their QB. High on the high on the chart. It's friend. Trace Jackson's brother. Yeah, Trace yeah, Jackson yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah he's going to Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, he? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. good for he's, him. And then the one kid's been offered by Alabama, Clemson. I mean, everybody in the country. Yeah. And so uh, he's 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 going to be a really good player. So yeah, they they should have an outstanding year. Do you enjoy doing that? I do. Um, I don't know, you know, I know a heck of a lot more about basketball. And they don't ask me to, at the Center Grove to do the basketball games, but they asked me to do the football games. I think the reason <laughs> behind that is the, the men's club or the, the family club, whatever it is, has a lot more money in the football than they do basketball. basketball. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I do enjoy doing it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't try to come across like I'm John Madden and understand all the de you know, everything that they're doing, but I kind of try to talk about the uh, mental approach of, you know, how, you know, you got the target on your back and what, you know, what you're having to do mentally sure. and physically to get yourself ready to, to play against some of these better teams. They were nationally ranked last year, oh, yeah. one or two or somewhere yeah, real think, close. They got up in the top 10, I think, yeah. and then I'm sure they'll be highly ranked again this year. Yeah. So one last question. I got someone texting me. They want to know about Dan Dockage. Is, is, his, is that all shtick, or is he that really him on his show? Do you listen to his show? I listen to it some <clears throat> once in a while. Um, I mean, Dan's always been good to me, and, uh, you know, he was – he I played with him for – uh, he played with me for a couple years, and uh, he was a good player. I mean, he fought hard and, you know, worked hard. Um, you know, they talk about him guarding Michael Jordan. I mean, I mean, anybody that knows Dan Dockage and knows Michael Jordan knows that he can't guard Michael Jordan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, I think Dean Smith guarded Michael Jordan better than anybody else that day when he made him sit once he had two fouls. Two fouls, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Dan's a good guy. Um, I wish that he would kind of he, he over the last couple of year couple or last year he's kind of gotten a little easier on coach since coaches with the dementia and stuff. I wish that he would you know not talk so negative about him. I mean, it, I understand. I mean, coach didn't. There's nobody he yelled at more than he yelled at me during those years, um, and it's disappointing sometimes as far as that, but. He's a good guy. Dan's a good guy, and he does a nice job on the radio. I, I, I think that you know, and I mean, I listen to him talking about the Colts or the Pacers, and I think he brings up a lot of good points as far yeah. as things. If you uh, expect to win, these are this is the things you need to do, and uh, so. Uh, but I try to stay out of his line of fire because people that have the microphone always have a lot more power. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah. So, sure. Well, man, I really appreciate you coming down and spending the time with us. This is I've really, really enjoyed it, and I, I hope you have had a good time tonight. I had a great time, and I appreciate uh, you calling. And uh, is there anything I can do to help? You know, let me know. Yeah, I want ahead. to say a couple things. Um, Chuck Crab <laughs> threw us an offer. He said, "You get tomato pie, which is a pizza place down in Paragon." up here delivered and I'll come back on. So when we do that, <laughs> we'll call you back in and yeah, say, come on, hang go. out with Chuck and we'll, we eat yeah. pizza. So that's a definite, but I was, uh, I graduated in 85 and I just, you have no idea. I wish my dad could be here. Yeah. The love and the respect that he had for you guys back then, because, and it, and it wore off on us too, but just some phenomenal basketball played the right, right way. <clears throat> Every bit of it. And I can't say how much we appreciate what you guys did. For the the whole state of Indiana, just some very awesome. Yeah, it time. was. Uh, I don't think you always understand it when you're an athlete and you're doing it, but it was a great honor at that point in time. A great honor to put the Indiana jersey on. Uh, obviously, very fortunate. I mean, uh, you know, like I'll watch the national championship game. You know, when Baylor was playing this year, 
versus Gonzaga, and they'll have the starting lineups. And I look at my boys and say, you know what? I did that. I did you know, that. I, I did that. Right. And you got to feel very fortunate that you were lucky enough to have done that. Right. And uh, it was a great honor uh, playing for Indiana and a great honor to have played in front of the people that we were able to play. They were great fans. And uh, uh, I continue, you know, I'm, I'm noticed every day or, oh, you played for a national championship. So, uh, you know, in this, in this state, it's very special. That I said last question earlier, but I got a couple more. So, in your four years, the worst season you had, you finished second in the Big Ten. I mean, if yeah. you think about it, three three Big Ten championships and a second place, I mean, that's pretty good. And then, what's it like being on campus at the height of that? Like after a national championship, did win in the Big Ten? Like, is, is it just people? Did people leave you alone, or was it just people constantly tugging at you? Hey, come and do this. Hey, come to this party. Hey, yeah, hang out the, with us. The people. Um... You know, because we we went to class and because we were in class and, I mean, if we played Minnesota at 9 o'clock on Thursday night and Friday morning we're at an 8 o'clock class, excuse me, I think that people appreciated that. I think the profs appreciated it and I think the kids appreciated it. I don't think they were afraid to approach us and, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, obviously went in the national championship uh, you know, we flew in here and we got in a bus and, you know, I remember the, the highway just kind of parted as we drove, drove down, through, you know, um, and then they drove us right down on the ramp and the ramp into assembly hall. And then we went out of the curtain and obviously nobody was going to class that day. That day. So <laughs> not that a was, chance. That was a big, big, big time. And, uh, but the, the, Kids were always great. I mean, you know, I mean, we could be on campus and a little five weekend, we could, we could have as much fun as anybody else had, you know, and, uh, I mean, you weren't going to see us much out and about during the season. I sure. Mean, we just too busy. We didn't go to the bars or do anything like that. I mean, why give coach Knight any, any more ammo, <laughs> you know, you didn't want to give him any, any, Anything that is this a big play, Ted? <laughs> yeah, you didn't want him to get anything that he could is, use. Is anything you can't can say will and be used against you right, right. In, in a court of basketball. Yeah, yeah. so you have to be careful. But uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't go out during the season. But after the season, we could have a good time, and uh, we did. And uh, yeah, it was a great place to go. The 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 kids treated us great, and uh, so yeah. I think it's funny you said I won a national championship and later that summer I'm back on your dad's right, like right. trash back yeah, here working on the farm. Cultivating corn, <laughs> cultivating beans. Put that ring up. I'm on, yeah. I'm on the tractor, yeah. you know, so uh, working that's, in the fields. That's funny. So lots of good comments. Uh, Milo says, good show. Don Charles says, amazing. Ted's a great man. Uh, great, great show. show. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate you coming in and taking taking the time and spending with us. It's it's been a good time. Well, so. I I enjoyed it very much. You guys are very kind, and uh, it's great to reminisce about some of the great times that uh, you know Indiana basketball. And I just pray that Woody will have a good good year this year and a good run at IU. Hope hopefully bringing that great great team back to the great tradition yeah. i want the kids that play there to enjoy it and enjoy the success like that i had right you yeah. know and i know that they're capable of doing it they just have to have a different mindset and kind of get things moving in the right direction yeah uh, like we said earlier when the golf outing rolls around next year we've got ten thousand members on on this site so shoot us some Fantastic. information yeah. we'll post it on there um yeah and we'll help you i mean Probably don't need any help. You said it was already sold out or whatever, but if we can get some donations or whatever, we'll, we'll That'd help be great. you. Yeah. So I'll send you, uh, I'll try to send you the link. Okay. And uh, that way you can put it up and uh, people can donate. That'd be so great. That. That'd be great. Thank you, sir. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Bye, guys.